What is up my friends? It is semi-final leg number two. The Reds travel to Craven Cottage to take on Fulham. Team news is in and the big news of the day, Andy Robertson is in the match day squad. He is named on the bench today. What a brilliant little boost that is ahead of uh, a particularly trying couple of weeks that we have ahead of us. The news that Robbo is back and in the match day squad is honestly, it's made my week, so I'm over the moon with that one. Uh, the big news up top is Darwin does start, Gakpo does start, and Diaz starts, so we'll go through it in more detail in a few moments' time, but that's the big break of news, that we do have Andy Robertson now back available, and that makes me very, very happy. I'm sure it does you guys as well. Now look, I'm not expecting this to be an easy game tonight. Fulham have a final at stake, same as we do, but we know one thing, my friends, we know one thing. If we don't concede, or we don't lose this game, we're in the final. It's it's in our own hands and that's all we can ask for in these situations. So let's hope we don't concede an early goal and have to do it the Liverpool way, which is always the hard way, but hopefully we get the job done and we can look forward to one final already in the bag at Wembley and a trip down to Anfield South for the Travelling Cup. So how are we are looking bright there, Craig? Yes, do you know what I mean? It's match day. I want to be seen. So I get the bright the bright white tops on. Um do you know what? It is very bright, but this camera that I have is a little bit weird. It doesn't like black and it doesn't like white. So black makes me look really pale. White makes me look very bright. So I've gone for the bright. I don't mind the brightness. If it hurts your eyes, put on a pair of sunglasses or else I can tone down the colour. One or the other. I'm, I'm so happy. You know what? I'm just buzzing about this. It feels weird, right? We're in January and we're in a semi-final. Second leg. It's class. I can't wait to get stuck into it. I can't wait to go through the teams and see how you're all feeling about it. I don't think we can have too many complaints about the selection. So let's start off and have a look at the Liverpool team. You can see it on your screen there, but it is obviously Mr. Creevy and Kelleher in goal. Then it's Joe Gomez at left back, Connor Bradley at right back, and Jarrell Kwanzaa comes in alongside uh, our captain, Virgil van Dijk, today. That makes up your back five. In midfield, it is Alexis McAllister in the holding role, and then ahead of him, it is Harvey Elliott and Mr. Mr. Ryan Gravenberg, up top, Diaz, Darwin and Gakpo. So there we go. That's where we're at, my friends. No Jada, which is a bit of a surprise, I would say, considering his great form. But uh, he is on the bench, isn't he? Let me just triple check that. Uh, yes, he is on the bench, as is Curtis Jones. So Pep Linders was good to his word. So we've Alison Becker, Ibrahim Akanade, Curtis Jones, Diogo Jota, Andy Robertson, Bobby Clark. Uh, James McConnell, Owen Beck and Trey Neone on the bench today. That is your Liverpool bench. Let's have a look at the Fulham team for the first time. It's Leno, Castagna, Tosin, Diop, Robinson, Polina, Carney, De Cordova, Reed, Andreas, Pereira, Willian and Raul Jimenez. That is the Fulham eleven. Are we feeling confident? No, Jota isn't injured. He's on the bench. It's just, I guess, I guess maybe Klopp wants to... Uh, to see if we need to break glass in order to bring on the goal scoring machine that is the Ogo Jota. But look, either way, I don't have too many complaints about it. Would I have gone for Jota ahead of Gakpo? Well, I did say to you guys the other day that I thought I had there's certain traits in certain players for certain games, and sometimes Klopp will make that switch between Gakpo and Jota. And today he obviously feels away from home. Maybe Cody Gakpo is a little bit more. Uh, able to hold up the ball or link play a bit if we need to relieve some pressure perhaps I don't know I'm second guessing the manager here uh, right what is Mark oh so yes Mark has sent this over to me and I did see it earlier on we got confirmation today that next season the EFL Cup or the League Cup I should say sorry will still have two legged semi-finals and that's because a deal hasn't been struck yet for um, a rescue package for money trickling down. So the EFL haven't budged. So next season, two-legged semis again. Now, I don't see how they think in any way that's going to strengthen their hand with Premier League clubs if they want to win favour to get this trickle-down money. But uh, I guess it's a negotiating tactic, but we are where we are with that. So we did expect this was going to be the last two-legged semi-final, but we'll have it next year again. Just on my images here, Klopp's having a cup of coffee and a little chat with uh, Marco Silva ahead of the game. Liz said, happy match day. Let's effing go. Thank you, Liz, for your super chat. First super chat of the day as well. We do have a poll open in the chat, my friend, simply asking you who do you think is going to the final, Liverpool or Fulham? Feel free to vote away. Antonio on Sky. Yeah, so did you guys see the poll that Boyle Sports conducted? Um, so Boyle Sports conducted a poll of the best pundits in English football. And this were the results. 
Now, I can't help but feel this vote was hijacked, maybe, by United fans, but this is how the results came in. According to Boyle Sports Survey, the highest-rated pundit was Gary Neville. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I have my moments with Gary. I've got my moments where I push back on him, but I will always say the man is a good pundit when he isn't um, stirring shit. So, no problem with that. But number two on the list? Guys, come on. Roy Keane. Somebody, I'm supposed to believe that Roy Keane is the second best pundit on English TV. I'm not having it. He's nowhere near the top 10, let alone second best. Third on the list, Alan Shearer. Then Ali McCoist. And let's be honest, Ali McCoist deserves to be higher up on that list. Ali McCoist is a brilliant pundit. Uh, next on the list is Thierry Henry. And again, I think Thierry's a fine pundit when he's not being a cheating SOB handling the ball for France. I'm still not over it. I'm still not over it. Uh, then it's Mika Richards. So they've obviously lost the plot completely here. Um, but this is the one that really got me, right? Next on the list is two former Liverpool players side by side. And they say Jamie Carragher gets 5.72% of this vote. But how on earth has Jamie Redknapp got 5.39%? There's no world that we can say that Jamie Redknapp and Jamie Carragher as pundits are anywhere near on the same level. Jamie Carragher is a way, way, way better pundit than Jamie Redknapp and gives us far more insight into the game and, and doesn't try to sell us sketchers at every opportunity. Uh, then it's Peter Crouch, Rio Ferdinand. And I feel Ferdinand's a bit low on the list as well, to be honest with you. Sometimes when I'm watching him on the BT uh, sports shows in the Champions League, you get really good insight from Ferdinand on defensive situations. Uh, then on the list is Graham Souness, Alex Scott, Danny Murphy, Jermaine Genus, Emma Hayes. Now look, that's obviously nonsense as well. Emma Hayes at 1.65%. Come on now. If any of you have ever listened to Emma Hayes, you will know that the woman knows her onions around football. And I could listen to her talk football all day, to be honest with you. So to see Emma Hayes that far down the list as well is, is weird. Uh, Karen Carney is bottom of the list with Owen Hargraves. But there's no Michael Owen on the list, which I found quite strange. Um, and also no Ian Wright on the list. Why no Ian Wright? Ian Wright's a brilliant pundit. He's not on the list. But look, I disagree with... Alan Shearer being so high up, I've no problem with. I think Alan Shearer gives good insight at times. Although I do disagree with him on Liverpool stuff a lot of the time. But to have Roy Keane second. All you've done there, folks, who voted in this poll. All you've done is encourage Sky to, um, to, to keep putting Roy Keane on the TV now. That's going to actually make them think that we all like Roy Keane's punditry. He's shite. He's terrible. Awful. One of the worst. Really good footballer, absolutely one of the best Irish players to ever put on a football shirt. But as a pun that he gives nothing other than abuse or criticisms. I don't ever hear him explain that. But look, that's that list anyway. You can have a look at it in your own time if you get a chance. Uh, knows your onions is Craig's phrase of the week. No, I've been saying that for ages. Just because you don't, Connor or Ben, take note of my magnificence doesn't mean, you know, I don't say it. I say it all the time. Knows your onions, you know what I mean? It's there. It's a phrase I've used for quite a while. Emma Hayes is a top pundit. She's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Emma Hayes is a great football in mind. I could listen to her all day. And look, some of those, I guess, are subjective. You know, we all like different things from our pundits. But, you know, I might be old-fashioned here. But I like my pundits to give me an insight that I can't see with my average Joe soap eyes. You know, I like to be informed when I'm watching football pundits. And I don't feel like Roy Keane ever really informs me. Whereas with like Neville, Shearer, yes. McCoist is brilliant, by the way. Ali McCoist is one of my favourite pundits. Um, so yeah, I have a few disagreements with the list. And Rio Ferdinand should be higher up the list as well, in my humble opinion. Remember, this isn't who we like. This isn't a personality test. It's how good they are at their job. And I, I, I mean, I'm shocked. Have I eaten broccoli yet? Well... Do I look like I've eaten broccoli? Yeah. Come on now. Uh, Random Joker 75, welcome, my man. Thank you for joining Anfield Agenda FC. Appreciate you. You've definitely upped the uh, onion meter in the last week or 10 days. Probably. Probably. See, you have to remember, when I start flicking through my brain for phrases, the first thought is, don't get cancelled and don't offend anybody. So those are two things that I have to... After that, I don't care what silliness I come out with. Uh, you've got the blinkers on because you dislike Kino. No, I don't. And honestly, again, this I dislike Kino stuff is not real. I dislike Kino as a pundit. As a footballer, one of the best to do it. 
incredible. But honestly, I just don't understand what insight he gives. Like, give me an example of something Keane has added to a conversation. All I ever hear is, United are terrible. In my day, it was this. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I love Cristiano Ronaldo. That's pretty much a summary of Roy Keane's punditry. So, um, it's not that I hate him. I just don't think he's a very good pundit. I've nothing against Mr. Roy Keane. He's an incredible footballer. As I said, back in the day, one of the finest to do it in a green jersey. But, yeah, just not doesn't do it for me as a pundit. having a laugh you're having a laugh uh johnny welcome to anfield agenda fc my man appreciate your support uh riley how are you sir welcome in no ebu today he's on the bench kevin he's on the bench uh i think did i didn't i see him on the bench let me just triple check that just to make sure i'm not talking at me rear end again because it's been known to happen you know where's the stream notes we Ibu, 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 Ibu's on the bench, yeah, he's on the bench. Keen is comedy gold sometimes. Yeah, that's fine. But then he's not on there just to be funny. But I did, look, of course, he has funny moments, he does. But he doesn't inform me. And that's what I would say myself. Oh, what's that boat outside Fulham's gaff? That looks pretty class. Craig is Irish. How could he dislike Keane? Just compliment him as a player. Exactly. I just don't rate him as a pundit. But anyway, it is what it is. Just in a, These things are all personal taste anyway, so... Uh, how are you, love, from California? I'm very good, thank you. I was literally just looking over flights to Las Vegas for October. Um, I, I didn't realise that, actually. There's no direct flights from Dublin to Las Vegas, so I've had to take a couple of stops to get over there but i'm looking at those flights for later on so cannot wait uh what do i think of the kimmich links look i've said this before pranav i would be very happy if liverpool brought in joshua kimmich um especially if you look at what we're trying to replace and that would be that tiago experience now what i would say is i would almost i would say bet my life but Every part of me thinks he ends up at Manchester City. It just screams a Manchester City type deal. Uh, having worked, obviously, Pep Guardiola worked with Kimmich before as well. I think that's likely where Joshua Kimmich ends up. But for me, you know, if Thiago moves on, replace him in the squad with somebody of that experience, I'd have no problem with that whatsoever. Actually, I was doing this a little calculation earlier on. And I don't say this to have a dig at Thiago because I like Thiago. But it's roughly about seven and a half, eight million pounds since he last kicked the football that he's been paid in salary, um, based off his projected wages of about two hundred grand a week. That doesn't sit well. It's a lot of money to not kick a ball, and as I said, he's not not kicking a ball on purpose. But from our perspective, to see some people even try to highlight the possibility of him getting an extension just feels lunacy to me. Like I just couldn't see it. You know, I think we have to say goodbye to Thiago in the summer. Pizza down, wine poured. Come on, Liverpool. Well, Nick, you're already up on me, mate. Uh, no pizza, no wine. Well, I'll be whining a little bit, but not in your sense of the word. Quick question. Do you think we'll get a new kit style or colour for this year? I don't understand the question, Keen. Um, when you say this year, you mean the new season coming up in the summer? Well, yes, we'll get three new kits. And there's talk that there's even maybe a fourth new kit. Um, I don't like what Nike have done. I find it very boring. And the kits that we've seen leaked, I still can't figure out why the Nike take has gone like that to this on one of the shirts that's been leaked. It just looks weird to me. And from a design perspective, I don't get it either. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a biggest the biggest fan of Nike's kits, to be honest. I think they're all very overpriced and mundane some of them have been all right like the away shirt this season's grown on me as i've seen the kit throughout the year the green and white one i know a lot of people love the cream colored with the green collar as well that was i think one of the biggest selling shirts we've had as a club but I, they've not really done it for me because the home shirts the, the holy grail that's the gospel that's the one you've got to get right and i just feel like a lot of the liverpool shirts have been very boring or copy and paste
if you buy shirts, you'll never get rid of FSG. Well, I'm not buying shirts, but not for that reason. Just because I don't like them. That's the, more of a reason. Uh, and also, I, I say this loads of times, but looking at what PSG get from the, you know, um, Air Jordan stuff, and you see their crossover stuff, and you think, oh, my God. If only Liverpool had that hookup, I, I'd be broke. I won't lie to you, lads. I would be broke if we had the Jordan stuff. Uh, Nike are shite. The New Balance ones were definitely better. I love them, Paul. I was a huge fan of New Balance stuff. And I wasn't excited when we signed with New Balance, but... Uh, well, actually, we signed with Warrior, didn't we? And then they, they emer or came together as a company or one stop doing football stuff, I think it was, because Warrior was part of the New Balance family. Um, and I loved it. I loved the trainers. I loved the training gear. I loved the polo shirts. Liked a lot of the jerseys. I haven't really had the same connection with Nike. I'm not confident with that lineup. Why? That's a pretty... I don't understand what there is to be unconfident about. Like, best case scenario, the only changes really you would have got there was Canada staying at centre-back and Jota at centre-forward. Other than that, it's pretty much samey-samey, as we had the other day. You know, instead we've got uh, Gravenberg in for Jones. And, I mean, I don't see a worrying sign in the team selection. It's pretty strong. It's good enough for me. Kelleher is this competition's goalkeeper, so you can cry on about it as much as you want in the comment section. It's not going to change the fact that it's his competition. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. It's not going to change. It is Griefing Kelleher's competition. And I'm not trying to defend him because I agree with you. But, you know, we've just got to suck it up. The, the decision was made and he gets the jersey. I, look, I'm not going to lie. Of course, I'd be more comfortable with Alisson in goal. I'm the same as all of you. When you've got the world's number one goalkeeper at your club, if he's not playing, it's a fair question to say, are we weaker? Because the answer is yes. But it's a very common thing to do in this tournament. Look at Chelsea last night as well, Petrovic. Unless there was an injury there or something, was there? I've missed. Who's on the bench? So for Liverpool, the bench looks like this. Uh, Alison Becker's on the bench. Ibrahim Akanade is on the bench. Curtis Jones, Jota. Uh, Andy Robertson returns, which is such good news. Then it's Clark, McConnell, Beck and Neoni. So a little bit of um, experience, a little bit of youth on the bench. Good mix, in my opinion. Craig, do you like a fry-up? Oh, God, yes. I very much do, mate, yes. Gotta have potato farls, though, or soda bread. Craig, I love your work. Watch you all the time. Don't let Paul Merson get to you. He's making you dilly. Not getting to me at all, mate. You do realise sometimes... I make content, so I have to make it a little bit uh, fun, emotional. Merson doesn't get to me, and I actually have no ill feeling towards Paul Merson at all. Um, I just sometimes get astounded by professional pundits being paid money and nobody maybe reading these columns before it goes out and pointing out to him the very obvious flaw <laughs> in his thought process. Uh, Robbo seems to have been out forever. And now it feels like a lifetime, Marty, doesn't it? It really does, but it's great news that he's back in the squad. Um, I read it on Sky earlier on today, and I was like, huh? Are Sky getting ahead of themselves here? But fair enough. Out came the squad, and there he was on the bench, which is uh, a lovely Brucey bonus. How do I feel about Cole Palmer? Um... I feel like he's done the right thing for his career. I'm not sure, you know, what level he's really at because I only see Cole Palmer in little bits because, you know, I'm not a Chelsea fan. But it takes courage to do what he did, to accept the deal, to leave comfortable surroundings at Manchester City and to go and search a first-team football. So he gets full credit for me for that because these guys have short careers. And if the lad backed himself to go and make it and play first-team football, a fair play. So... Yeah, well done to Cole Palmer. I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision. Antonio just said he wants a Fulham Chelsea final. Yeah, but you forgot the really important part there, Katie. And that is that Antonio's a knob. Antonio has a big, dirty chip on his shoulder about Liverpool because he's a twat. And he talks shit. 
And he can't take it when Liverpool fans call him out for his nonsense. So him, Danny Murphy and everybody else with the Fulham scarves on can watch on and enjoy. As Liverpool once again remind Mikel Antonio to shut up and keep your thoughts to yourself, dude. Because you just keep embarrassing yourself. Gave it all this, come to Anfield then and you disappeared. So, yeah, we can all talk a great game on a chair. But Antonio doesn't back it up. So... He's like that little chihuahua that just keeps barking, you know. <laughs> no. And weirdly, again, I actually like Mikel Antonio outside of his Liverpool opinions. I've actually always said that he's a player who I admire because he's played a whole host of positions. He's always, I mean, he must be a joy to work with because he works very hard, covers the hard yards on the pitch. He's a proper fighter on there as well. I just don't get why we're in his head. I don't understand why Liverpool and our fans seem to put him on tilt quite a lot. But hey, hey, I guess it's because we're fucking massive, right? WFM. Maybe that's what Antonio needs. Maybe he just needs a reminder that, you know, WFM exists. Uh, Connor said, I've always liked Antonio up until now since he's done that Homer Simpson celebration. Yeah, Connor's very protective about Simpson stuff. Antonio and Callum Wilson have a crush on Liverpool. They wish they played for us. Again, another player I like, Callum Wilson. You know, both of those lads will always put in a shift for you. So from football's perspective, I think Mikel Antonio's great, but his opinions on Liverpool certainly don't uh, ingratiate him to Liverpool fans. Do you mind filling me in on what Antonio said? Google it. So you took the time to write that message. You could have absolutely just Googled the same thing and got the answer. Because it's not a once-off thing. He gives a few opinions on the Footballers Footballer podcast or whatever it's called. Uh, and then he tries to give a Billy Big You Know What by saying, Don't at me. Don't come into my DMs. But then shut your mouth. Stop talking about Liverpool and concentrate on West Ham and Jamaica. And leave, you know, leave the winning shit to us. Jurgen must be taking the P with this lineup. Where's Curtis and AB1? Have you just, just your first time watching us, Tommy, in the League Cup, mate? Because this is Creeping Heller's competition. Was last year. Was when we won it. Is this year. Will always be. And with regards to Jones, I guess it's just making sure that since he left the pitch holding his hamstring the other day, that he doesn't overexert himself and pick up a bigger injury. So that's the answer, my man. Um... Again, if that sounds harsh, my apologies. But that's the answer, dude. You know, it's precautionary around Jones and this is just Kelleher's competition. I'm not saying I agree with it or disagree with it. I'll tell you what I definitely do disagree with. That's scarf Daniel Sturridge is wearing. I'm, I'm not having it. Sturridge is better than that. If you guys can see the scarf I'm seeing, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, What's the cartoon character that it looks like? Somebody needs to tell me the cartoon character that that, that, that looks like. Is from the Cat in the Hat? Is from the Cat in the Hat? Because it looks weird, Studge. You know, I love Daniel Sturridge, but that looks very, very weird. Oh, look, another moron that can't spell. Well done, mate. You're a moron. Congratulations. You can take that home with you. Uncle Craig always called you on it, so... If you're going to call us loser pool, at least learn how to spell the damn word. God almighty. It's looser that you keep spelling. Why are you all so thick? Why is it the trolls come in and they really just don't... They, they, they just show themselves up. Can I please get the information of what school you went to make? Because I have a wet fish here I need to slap your teacher with because your teacher owes me an apology for having to read that. My eyes hurt. My soul is destroyed reading your stupidity, dude. And score predictions for tonight. Oh, do you know what? I, I've got to say, I am nervous. I, I am nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm nervous about this. Because knowing us, the game will go something like this. We'll be five, ten minutes in. We'll do something stupid. Fulham will score. And then we'll win it in the second half at 75 minutes or something. So I hope we come out, score an early goal, quieten down the Fulham faithful, and play within ourselves and ease into the final. 
But you know we don't do things the easy way, so let's wait and see. But I am nervous because I genuinely have a lot of respect for Fulham. Uh, keep doing what you do, mate. Keep up the good work, and I'm glad to be a member. Thank you, Paraline. Appreciate your support and everyone's support who is members. Um, welcome in. It's great to have you guys with us, and thank you for your support of the channel. Thank you for your thoughts on the game, of course, as well. And a big shout out and thank you to our moderators, led by Mark, who's our chief moderator. Without you guys and your help with the chat and stuff, we couldn't do it. So it means a lot to us that you're in here t night after night, helping us out. So thank you to you guys as well. Most importantly, my friends, do hit the like button. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. As you can see, we are closing in on the 250,000 subscriber goal that we have. So if you can help us out, you know, be appreciated. Craig, am I fussy about my coffee brand? Um, not really. No, nah, not really. Like, do you mean out and about coffee brands? If that's the question, no, not at all. If you mean at home, then like anybody else, I'd have my favourites, yeah. But they're not bougie, they're just Nescafe, really. Um, ba -ba -ba. I didn't even vote today because I just don't know what to expect. Yeah, it's a tough one, Torsten, mate. It's a tough one. Because you got to give Fulham respect. Every game we've played against Fulham this season have been, has been tough. Um, we've never battered them, you know. We know they're going to put up a good fight, so... Loving the stream from Dubai. Keep up the great hustle. Thank you, Lewis. I really, really do want to visit. Well, do you know what? It's not just me. My son's mad. He's loopy for trying to visit Dubai. He's always saying to me, can we go to Dubai on a holiday? So, got to get something sorted in the next year or so to get my little man over to Dubai. That's a part of the world I really need to visit. I keep saying this. I've never been anywhere kind of in the Middle East or towards Asia. And it's definitely a part of the world I need to see at some point. Because it looks... So many parts look beautiful. If Liverpool get to the Europa League final in Dublin, who plays in goal? Oh, Alisson, I would imagine. I would imagine Alisson. Um, yeah. I like to think of it this way, and I don't want to say this is how Klopp thinks about it because I don't know. But group stage games in the Europa League, you can dick about a little bit. You can make your changes. You can, you know, uh, rotate. When it gets outside, you get the last 16 onwards. It gets a bit more serious. I like to revert back to as strong as we can be at that time. Um, unless, of course, you hammer the first leg and it's a, it's a, it's a cakewalk in the second leg. Uh, I agree with Craig. Can't even see us go 2-0 down on the night and come back late on to get through. I don't I exactly, Philip. I just don't know what to expect. Uh, like I tell you, what I'd love to happen: us to do what Chelsea did last night, go and bang in four in the first half, and you know have a dead and buried. But I can't see it happening because Fulham are uh, are good. Do you think Klopp will play Robbo? I hope so. I hope he gets a few minutes off the bench. Um, yeah, look, we're all excited to see Andy Robertson back. Understandably, he's... Uh, I know we use this phrase quite a bit, but it really will feel like a new signing because of how long he's been out. And um, But I want to give credit to Gomez as well. I think he's done very well on the left side, filling in for Robbo and Costas since they've both been out. And um, it's just great to get players back now, isn't it, as we get to the business end of the season. Do you think... Who do you think is the biggest threat on Fulham? So, I'm Deckard Overeed, if I'm being honest. <clears throat> Deckard Overeed always worries me because he's very lively. But let me have a look, actually. Is, is Anthony Robinson playing? I haven't even looked at... Uh, I haven't really paid attention to Fulham's lineup. Yeah, Anthony Robinson's playing for them as well. So, he's definitely one that will give um, Connor Bradley his money's worth, let's say, for this one. Where's the red top? So, sometimes, Shane, people say to me, why do you always wear that red hoodie? And tonight, I wanted to change it up because, you know, we do read the comments and people are like, does he always wear that red Adidas hoodie? And I kind of do, but because I have a... Uh... Yeah. I'm going to put this on screen in a second. Hang on. One sec. Look at this. That's, that's the hoodie. Or that's the scarf I'm talking about. 
That's that's the one. I'm not I'm not having it, Studge. You're better than that, dude. Do you know what I mean? You're better than that, Daniel. Come on now. Where cat in the hat? Yes, I knew it was something. There was something along those lines that popped into my head as soon as I seen it. That's you know what I mean. You're better than that, Studge. You now come on. Looks like the Lorax. There you go, the Lorax. That is, that's, that's it. Now, see, this is why I turn to you guys for these, because you, you guys have the answers. My boomer brain doesn't know the answers to these, but boom, I knew the chat would have it. Looks like he's wearing bag puss around his neck. So, but do you know what I love about Studge? Like for me now, he doesn't care. You know, he just, that's him. And I love that about Daniel Sturridge. He doesn't care. Same with Bobby. They do what they want. And fair play. What's the score prediction for the game? Oh, right. I'm going to have to get off the fence, am I? Die? I'm going to say 2-1 or 3-2 to Liverpool tonight is my guess. Look, the 3-2 could be just me being optimistic, you know. But I'm going to, going to go with that. Uh, Graham Childs, thank you for joining Anfield Agenda FC, my friend. Appreciate you. Doctor Who, Tom Baker, settings with that hat and scarf, said Robert. Do we have a drink today? No, I haven't been. My stomach's been a little bit iffy over the past week or so. So I don't want to throw in any um, over sugary, caffeine filled drinks at the minute. So no, no, nothing today. If you couldn't cover football, what other sport would you cover? Boxing. Yeah, definitely boxing. See, I wouldn't cover a sport if I didn't feel I could hold my own in a conversation. Now, I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination I know boxing inside out, but I've been around it long enough that I think I could hold my own in a conversation. Uh, other sports, darts maybe. Um, hopefully in about five years NFL, but I've still got a lot to learn. What trophies do you think we will win this season? Said Paraline. Um, it's a tough question to answer because some of it's dependent on how the draws work out. Uh, obviously, this competition, you'd have to say, Chelsea waiting in the final. It's a difficult final if we get there, but I'd still back us. So hopefully this. Um, and then after that, you want one of the big two. So the league is the priority for me. That's the number one. And after that, league, Europa... League Cup, FA Cup. And I know everybody else will say FA Cup. I just love the League Cup. Looking suave today. Thank you, Mr. Buffeset. Appreciate you. Looking bright. Um, I love Adidas clothes, as you know. And um, yeah, I, I always try to wear Adidas stuff where I can. Do we really need Mbappe or does he need Liverpool? Um... I don't know the answer to either part of that, mate. But I know I'd like him. <laughs> and I guess that answers my thought process. Um, I think, look, I honestly think Liverpool would be a great fit for Mbappe. Because I think we could give him everything he needs. The discipline, we're working with Jürgen. The adulation and the love from the fan base. we we'll give him the platform to go on and do what he wants to do. And I, I genuinely just feel... It, it would be a great fit on some sides. I get people worry about his attitude and I get the distractions. But actually, on distractions, can I just say something? And again, before the you're knocking Salah haters come in, this isn't actually really about Mohamed Salah himself, but more the circus. So what we see again is Mohamed Salah going away with Egypt to the AFCON and drama ensues. And it always seems to happen and it bugs me because every time we lock horns with the Egyptian FA, it's a ball ache. And I just feel like I'm getting a bit fed up of it all, to be honest with you. Like, it doesn't feel like Liverpool can win no matter what they do in these scenarios. Um, somebody for me, the Egyptian FA, always seems to want to have a pop at Liverpool about something. And this is no different. And ultimately... I feel like sometimes what's best for the player is lost in these conversations. And the only conversation about Mohamed Salah and his injury should be about how can we get Mo rested up 
and back playing for either Egypt or Liverpool as quickly as possible with the best care and the best treatment. And whatever the answer to that is, and I don't know the answer, I just wish they go about it and not turn it into a, into a ping pong match between Liverpool and the FA. And again, I didn't say it was Mo's fault. I made a point at the start of saying this has nothing to do with Mo. So don't come at me with that shit because I, I made it very clear. My beef here is not with Mo. But there's always a bit of drama. Wages. Saudi. Egyptian FA. It just gets a bit distracting at times. Um, yeah, I just find it really annoying that the Egyptian FA seem to... Because look, I look at it like this, right? So we sent Mo over to the AFCON really early, as the Egyptian FA wanted. Didn't ask for any special dispensation or anything. And then you look at the way the situation with Onana and Cameroon panned out, where the dude rocked up one day before Cameroon's first game, was late, didn't play the first game, shits the bed in the second game, gets dropped for the third game, and that's all fine. No problems. We send Mohamed Salah over as soon as is requested from Egypt, and he gets injured, which has, again, got nothing to do with Liverpool, and somehow we end up the bad guys in this equation again. It just riles me, to be honest with you. Uh, Craig, just wondering, you could do a shout-out for my staff for donating towards the charity Spirit Cure for Cancer. Um... In New Zealand is the testing company with great staff who are fighting horrible disease. Areem, A-E-R-E-M. That's awesome, Benjamin. And massive love for your staff, my man. Look, there's loads of great people out there doing lots of great stuff. Cancer is something that I think touches touches all of our lives at some point. Um, my father-in-law had cancer in three places and we didn't know if he was going to make it or not. And thankfully, he's still here with us. So... It's definitely something I think is close to everybody's heart. And the sooner we get to a world where, you know, we can solve cancers and we can cure a lot. And they have made a lot of progress, to be fair. That's a beautiful thing, mate. So well in. And any selfless acts like that deserves a lot of credit. So thank you for highlighting it, mate. And thank you to your staff for the great work. Uh, that man does not deserve all the hate. He's a great personality. He's amazing. Absolutely. He's an absolute superstar. A wonderful human being. A top man. I just... I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because... I, I Actually, don't, I don't know. I just... And this isn't that Mo, as I said. Love Mo. It's I don't know what the... Well, there's always a gripe with Liverpool and the Egyptian FA. Nothing to do with Mo, as I've said. But they always seem to butt heads. Uh, Mike, once they all sing song to start, I think. Oh, and the Reds go marching in. Oh, and the Reds go marching in. But I can't sing the next part, Mike. I want to be in. And my wife just says, me wife. So that's why I stop there. Uh, you're in the wrong colours tonight, am I? Or am I? lulling Fulham into a false sense of <laughs> no I just grabbed this top mate because it, it's warm in here at the minute the heating's been on so I needed a short sleeve t-shirt Paul Tierney's refereeing the Chelsea game next Wednesday I know I, I, I sent an email to Paul Tompkins last night actually um, you know I've, I've known Paul Tompkins over the years uh, you know was kind enough to give me three hours of his time before for an interview he often sends me over signed copies of his books when he writes them. He's a really, really good man. And as you know, I keep highlighting the article Paul Tompkins wrote about the uh, statistics behind Paul Tierney refereeing us. So, yeah, I'd love to pick Paul's brain on this one again because um, Mr. Tierney, when I seen that appointment yesterday, man, immediate anger. I don't, it's like they're just taunting us at this point. Craig, did I watch the podcast with Gomez? I haven't. No, I haven't. I won't lie to you, Kelsey. I haven't watched it. Uh, thoughts on my bet tonight. Fulham four shots on target. One Nunes shot on target in each half. Six to one. I don't know. I'm never any good at keeping track of shots on target. 
four teams and if I don't know if four is realistic or not. So I have a few little cheeky bets myself tonight, but six to one seems reasonable. I stuck a few small, like four or five quids on. Um, what did I get? I'll read it out to you. One second. So mine are, I got 28 to one for Darwin Nunes to score from outside the penalty area. So I said, why not? For the laugh, stuck a fiver on that. Got 25 to one for Jarrell Kwanzaa to score a header. So I thought, why not? And I got 18 to one on a prize boost uh, from Sky for Van Dijk to score a header. So that's my little four and five quid bet for the game. Uh, Laser Sharp said, Real Madrid will reportedly sell Vinicius Jr. as soon as Kylian Mbappe joins the club. Now, let me say this very clearly, John. And I, I mean John W. Henry. If Real Madrid are in any way interested in selling Vinicius Jr., I want us to be in that conversation, please, and thank you. Because I didn't think Real Madrid would ever consider selling Vinicius Jr. But if they do... I want us to be there. Let's let's get me involved. I'll do the negotiating. I would very much like a little bit of Vinny Jr. at Liverpool. Thank you very much. Um, but look, I don't know if that's true or not, mate. I'm sure it's been reported, as you've said, Laser Sharp. But wow, that would be crazy. Uh, just delete it because I deleted a comment from before. I can't stand it. Sorry. Liz, you were spot on, mate. I've seen the account name and I wouldn't have read out the comment after seeing the account name, no matter what it was, my, my friend. So I appreciate you looking out, Liz. Thank you. What's your biggest fear? Heights. Yeah, I'm I'm really scared of heights. <clears throat> In some situations, if my like, if I'm on a plane or something, looking out the window it doesn't bother me. But let's say I'm standing on a balcony on the top of a tall building or something, I get the urge to jump. And I've thought about this long and hard. I've even spoke about it with my psychologist and asked them why I get the urge to jump. And the only thing I can say is, in life normally, I want to attack the biggest fear. So I want to go at something to get it over with, if you get me. And that's all I can think about is that my biggest fear is that that happens. So psychologically, I want to go, well, let's get it over with. Which is weird, I know, but that's my big fear. Heights, 100%. Oh, and rats. Yeah, rats. Rats scare the bejesus out of me as well. Um, so my dad used to work in the county council. And he said to me before, I can get you a job on the bins. This was going back when I was about 18, 19. He said, I can probably get you a job on the bins. But you'll have to work up in the dump for six months up in Sandyford. And he said that up there, loads of rats, obviously. And I was like, eh, eh, no, not happening, Dad. You know, would love to do the bin, Lurry thing. Wouldn't have had a problem with that. But the dump part, working up in the dump for six months, watching rats run over my feet. No, eh, eh. <laughs> not happening. Uh, in many cases, your brain's instinct, say, for example, you're holding a baby, your brain can have an instinct like throw it. Well, <laughs> I can honestly say when I've had my kids in my arms, never did the instinct come in to say throw it. That that didn't happen. <laughs> um, the instinct of you're not good enough to look after this child, that probably came into my head, but definitely not the throw apart. Mine is for City to make a comeback, said your daily sob lover. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen. Oh, I was reading out why you scared a hen. I was like, huh? I finally got it. Sorry, that's on me. Sometimes intrusive thoughts get the better of us. Oh, absolutely. Oh, do you know what? I think I've told you this story before, but I remember being at my dad's funeral and I remember sitting in the front row and I remember the priest reading out some stuff and I remember sitting there and then all of a sudden I start chuckling and everybody looked at me and I couldn't explain why I was chuckling and why everybody else was sad, obviously, and I was, of course, heartbroken. But in this little moment in the church, 
when I seen the priest standing there at the altar delivering the prayers, my brain went, wouldn't it be really cool to run up there and start singing I Am A Real American, the Hulk Hogan song? And then just getting the choir to go, dan, 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 dan. and I had a little smirk and everybody looked at me as if to go, what is the, is the hmm? but that's how my brain works. Like it likes to maybe block out the, the, the sadness or the fear by throwing in a bit of humor or something. It's weird, right? Uh, here we go. It's snowing and freezing cold over in Canada, said Neil Howlett. Uh, Craig, as a scouser living in Italy, I'm in a bar on my own with Arsenal, Fulham and Chelsea supporters who are all Italian wanting Fulham to win. Oh, what's the matter, you? Got no respect. Shut up in your face. That's what you have to say to them, mate. Do you know? They'd, they'd appreciate that. I'm sure it's a relatable experience. I'm absolutely certain that I'm not the only person whose brain tries to inject humour into times where they're feeling sad or confused or frustrated. Uh, what's the word on Trent's return date? Uh, Norwich at the weekend, yeah. Norwich at the weekend was what Pep Linder said yesterday. So, fingers crossed. I put one pound on Gomez to score today, 50 pound return. You got fleeced? I can show you 150 to 1 for Gomez to score. You got fleeced, dude. But still, if it comes in, well in, 50 quid. Uh, Daniel Sturridge, and thank you, Mark, again, been speaking about Darwin Nunes. He said, he's an absolute menace for defenders. He causes so many problems. It's about being a great team player and what difference can he make to the team? He's such an influential player. Yep, very much agree with that, Mr. Sturridge. So Mbappe has already made the decision to leave PSC. The Frenchman wants 70 million euro a year, but Florentino Perez would only be willing to offer 35 million gross per year. And that comes from sport build. So 35 million gross is what? What's that a week then? 700? 700,000 euro a week before tax. I don't see... I'd be very surprised if Mbappe took a deal that's about three, 400 grand a week after tax in euro. Um, Let's wait and see. What's the one thing you wish to have in life? Um, The security of owning a home. I've said that from day one. And I'm not bougie, you know, buying this council house will do me grand. So if I can ever get approved and get a mortgage for like, I don't know, it'll probably cost me about 150 grand to buy this. That'd do. That'd be mission completed because uh, that's been my goal since day one. So if I can do that, job done. Um, and then whatever ha- if something happens to me, I know the wife and kids are going to be safe and have somewhere to live. So that's always been the goal. I always start laughing when I'm getting told off by a teacher. Oh, I can definitely relate to that as well. I think a lot of us could relate to that. Uh, what do you think about Sobosley almost being back? We saw what he's capable of the first half of the season. Look, it's brilliant, Robert, that we're getting, you know, the likes of Dom back, uh, Costas and Robbo. Robbo's in the squad tonight. Trent isn't too far away. I'd love if we got a positive update soon on Stefan by Cechic. That would really... Um, really be encouraging but look I think we're in a good moment now you know if Endo and Mo come back by the time those competitions are finished they're able to play as well it'll set us up well for the end of the season am I scared of spiders no not really no I'd have no problem like put it this way I'd much prefer a spider walking across my hand than a rat even though I know spiders, of course, can be vicious. But thankfully, we live in Ireland, so there's not too many. How come you've changed your opinion on Darwin? Have I? Care to explain to me when exactly I've changed my opinion on him, Richie? Because I know, for months, I've been very complimentary of him. And one game against United, I criticised them. One game. Same with Mohamed Salah. So... 
I haven't changed my opinion on him, Richie. I've been very, very, very supportive of Darwin Nunes from day one, my man. Do spiders poo? That's a really good question. I, I need the answer to that now. Do spiders poo? That's a damn good question. I, I need to know. Uh, I think tonight's game will be more open than the first leg, said Laser Sharp. Fulham need to go for it tonight, which will suit us. Uh, thank you, sir, as always, for your super chat. Uh, hello, Craig. What is Stefan's actual injury? So it isn't one that I've seen. Uh, when I read up and tried to dig into it a bit more, it said that there was a couple of things. So some of it, I think, is put down to, I don't want to say growing pains, but if I remember correctly, and I'm open to be corrected, I think Gerard had a similar thing around this age where he had a bit of a growth spurt or something like that, and he had some issues for a little while until they were managed. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's any one particular thing with Steph, and I think it's just his body developing. Oh, they liquefy their food. Ah, there you go. See, you, li you learn something new every day. Uh, fair play, Craig, for the answer. I don't watch many streams. I've just seen the clip. Oh, I get it. Richie, I get it. Honestly. And I understand how people see these things, mate, and think one thing of me. Because I've been guilty of that. I've seen clips of somebody and, you know, instantly judged something without context. No problems at all, mate. But I, I love Darwin. Um... You know, that, that United game, though, I, I was all kinds of crazy, mate. I won't lie. I was just so... Of all the games to, like, draw a blank in, you know, of all the games to not win, that just... I, I was Look, I, I have had to apologise for that day, Richie. I was... Yeah, I was very... Um, I was overly critical of too many people, mate, that day, and I held my hands up for it. It, was, it wasn't my finest hour. Uh, Dom is back in team training, said Druva. Uh, Captain Chaos for the win. Let's go, Darwin. Love that. Darwin will be a superstar, said Carl. Hope you are keeping well, Carl. And I hope yourself and Julie and the business is all going well. Nets wash along with Adam. Not sure. Um, I see, I'm not even sure the next watch along I'm doing. There's some talk we'll do something. One of us will do something on Friday on top of the league for the Manchester City game. Um, but I don't. We haven't decided it yet, to be honest. Uh, lots of stuff happening behind the scenes that people don't know about. Like we're, I've said to you before, we're working on some tech with a company at the minute that we're having developed, and it's getting to the nitty gritty part of that. The little bug fixes now, so a lot of focus on that. And um, we've had some sponsorship stuff we've been sorting out behind the scenes as well. So yeah, just crazy times at the minute for everybody. So we're all just running around putting out fires, really. We haven't had time to sit down and have a proper chat. I just want to say thank you for your work, mate. You don't need to thank me. It's a pleasure. You know, it's, it, I, I'm very privileged to be able to do this every day as a living. So please don't ever feel you need to thank me. It uh, should be me thanking you guys. Are you doing a Super Bowl watch along? No. I'm not. Uh, I, I'll admit why I'm selfish on that. Same with boxing. I need to have some things that are just for me to watch and enjoy. And with the Super Bowl, I need the sound. I need to hear the audio. I need to keep track of my bets, most importantly. I'm going to the Liverpool and City match. Well in. Right. The teams are in the tunnel. We aren't too far away now. They're about to walk out onto the pitch of Craven Cottage. We've got 90 minutes, maybe extra time to decide who goes to Wembley to take on Chelsea in the League Cup final. We'll go through the teams for you guys again, just in case you uh, haven't yet seen them. For Liverpool, it's Queefing Kelleher in goal. Connor Bradley at right back. Joe Gomez at left back. Jarrell Kwanzaa and Virgil van Dijk are your centre-back partnership for today. Alexis McAllister will anchor the midfield. Ahead of him, it'll be Ryan Gravenberg and Harvey Elliott. And then up top... It is Lucho Diaz, it is Mr. Cody Gakbo, and of course, Captain Chaos, Darwin Nunes. For Fulham, let me just grab their team actually real quick. For Fulham, they look a little bit like this. It's Leno, Castagna, Tosin, Diop, Robinson, Polina, Kearney, Decadova, Reed, Andreas Pereira, Willian, and Raul Jimenez. That is your Fulham 11. Simon Hooper is your matchday referee. 
Just a reminder, there is no VAR tonight either, so don't expect any decisions to be looked at if it isn't initially given. Would you be rather be face-to-face -face with a rattlesnake or a Brazilian wandering spider? I'd rather be face-to-face -face with Mila Kunis' boobs. Sorry, my wife's. So why are you giving me the situation where I pick one form of death over the other? Why can't I have something nice in my face for a change? Why can't it be like, Craig, would you prefer to motorboat Mila Kunis or your wife? You know, they're, they're the questions I much prefer. Jean is on the bench. Deal it, mate, on the bench. Uh, Liverpool bench, for those who haven't seen it, looks a little bit like this. Alison Becker, Ibrahim Kanade, Curtis Jones, Diogo Jota, Andy Robertson returns, which is a massive W, uh, Bobby Clark, James McConnell, Ombeck, Beck, and Trey Neone. That is your Liverpool bench. Humpty Hooper, yeah. I'm glad you remember that one. Neville and Wellian, Humpty Hooper, yes. Simon Hooper's the ref. The one that was um, refereeing when we didn't get the goal against Spurs. What's your thoughts on the Kibbich rumour? I'd love it to be true, but I think he ends up at Man City. But as I said, if we're losing uh, Thiago Alcantara in the summer, replacing him with somebody of similar experience um, like Joshua Kimmich would be absolutely sound. But I think from what I've read over the last few months, I think it's far more likely he'll end up at... Uh... You sound like you call him Creepy Kelleher. Well, to be fair, Ken... If any of us here can pronounce the name properly, probably going to be the Irish man. So it's Quivine Kelleher. It's not creepy. It's not anything. It's Quivine. And just, you know, a little bit of extra add on there for you, dude. It means Kevin. So if you want to call him Kevin, you can do that as well. But that's what Quivine means in Ireland. It's the Irish word for Kevin. Emma Hayes is awful. Yeah, no, she isn't. Emma Hayes is brilliant. And you ready, Connor? You ready? She knows her onions. How weird is it, by the way, seeing that beautiful new stand, Craven Cottage, still not filled full of fans? Must be very uh, weird playing in front of it. I know we have it with a certain section of the Annie Road end, but that stand has been a while there, full and waiting for the license to fill the rest of it. Right, anyway, let's get ready. About to kick off. Get the clock ready. As always, I'll do my best to keep you guys up to date with what's going on in the game. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button, please do. And also, don't forget to drop a like on the stream as well. The 600 likes already. We can get that up a little bit higher. And uh, if we can all just take a sec, hit that like button. That would make a big difference. Thank you very much. Right, let's get ready. So, the Reds are in the huddle, which is uh, a little thing Virgil van Dijk gathered in since he's become Liverpool captain. If it's a draw, will it go to pens? Extra time firstly, and then it would be penalties after that. So, here we go. Marco Silva looks very nervous. Uh, I think Craig likes Mila Kunis. She's on my list of um, acceptable cheating. You know the way everyone has a list with three people on it? She's one of mine. A realistic one, as you can guess. Right, Liverpool playing from right to left in the first half. Let's get ready to go. We're underway. We are underway. The ball goes back. And of course we do the decent thing and launch the ball long out left hand side. We're full when the first header and it goes out for Liverpool throw in. Yeah, she's on my list. My list is Mila Kunis. Um, uh, Mila, who was the other two? Uh, Katie Holmes and the... Oh, what's her name again? Hmm... Give me a minute. It'll come to me. I will sink in a second, Wayne. Don't worry. Uh, what's her name again? Red hair. English journalist. Stacey Dooley. Stacey Dooley. That's the one. Right, anyway, free kick to Liverpool, early doors, left hand side. Harvey Elliott and Alexis McAllister standing over it. Fulham defending just inside their 18 yard box. Cross in from Elliot. Header. And it goes wide. Header there from Lucho goes wide. Right, I will sink now when it gets to 1 minute and 30. So bear up. 
Had me at red hair. Well, my wife's a redhead as well, you see. Right, we are coming up now. Let me get the sync ready. Right, it is 1 minute 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Right, throw in right side. Um, uh, Connor Bradley, excuse me, to take it. Remember, it is 2-1 after the first leg, so we do have a bit of a... Bit of a cushion, albeit not too much. Polina now in midfield for Fulham. Oh, look at that from Bradley. Steps in, wins the ball. Slips it in beautifully to Gravenberg. Gravenberg to Diaz. Diaz slips it down the line to Darwin. Darwin holds it up left side of the penalty area. Gets his head up, looks for support. Goes back to Joe Gomez. Joe fires in across deep. Anthony Robinson gets a head in it. Drops to Elliott. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss, but I thought for a second there, are we going to get the Diogo Jota stuff all over again? First one misses and then gets the second ball, but wasn't to be. Elliot tries a little dink over the top, but Leno comes out and claims it. Bright start so far from the Reds. Guys, can you let me know, is Elliot getting booed every time he's on the ball? Because obviously I can't hear it. But I remember uh, at Anfield, I remember hearing that the Fulham fans were booing Elliot every time he got on the ball, which I found very weird. He is getting booed. It's weird. Like, I don't understand it because it's not like he left Fulham for anyone. He left to join his boyhood club, the club he supports all his life. That's shocking. Like, the dude's literally got his dream move. Anyway, I'm sure I'm sure Harvey's happy with how it's all worked out. Fulham now in centre of the park. Ball played in. It's loose, though, and it falls to Diaz. Diaz now has Darwin pull away to the left if he wants to use him. Gives it to Darwin. Not a fan of this camera angle, by the way. It seems very high up. Gomez, he spreads the ball out right-hand side to Jarrell Kwanzaa. Bradley. Van Dijk. Kwanzaa. Well, here's the thing that gets me. You don't see it with Liverpool fans. So if a player leaves Liverpool, let's say Lalana as an example, he doesn't get booed when he comes to Anfield. He gets applauded. He gets shown the respect he deserves. That's why I find it all weird. Although Suarez and Coutinho and all did get it. They get the treatment at Anfield, let's be honest. Van Dijk, out left-hand side to Diaz. To Darwin, back to Lucho. Lovely ball, Lucho, into the right channel to Connor Bradley. He fires an early ball across, a little bit too high, and it goes out on the far side for a Fulham throw in. Bit like when Owen played for United, we used to boom. Yeah, but that, that's not like at all, mate. That's. Owen going to the absolute arch enemy. So, yeah, I wouldn't say that's comparable at all. But look, either way, it's, as you said, it's not real hateful stuff. It's just pantomime booing. Right, Anthony Robinson now on that far side. Well, that's a misplaced ball from him. Allows Elliot to win it back. Bradley, man on Alexis. Ball inside, Gravenberg. I think, you know what, we've started brightly. I'm very pleased with how... Um, up to speed we are in the early exchanges here. I was expecting Fulham to come out 100 miles an hour, but we've matched them. Kwanzaa. Nothing on from. Goes back to Kelleher. Kelleher takes a touch. Goes long upfield looking for Darwin. He loses the first header. Ball breaks to Van Dijk. Plays it out left side to Lucho. Beautiful bit of control that Lucho. Up the line to Darwin. Go on the boys. Go on. Darwin mm, cuts inside, seeing the headlines, gets a strike, takes a deflection, gets into the arms of Leno. Do 
Should have probably pulled that back to the edge of the box to Gravenberg there, who had a bit more space ahead of him and could have got a clearer strike away. But look, it is what it is. Headed forward by Robinson. Ball breaks in midfield to João Polina. He gets away from Alexis McAllister, plays it out right-hand side to Dick Cordova reed Fulham play a nice little one-two. Ball in. Ooh, Quevy and Keller had to get down, touch that round his near post. I don't know if that was a cross or a shot, but either way, it was uh, definitely caught Quevy and Keller's attention, the Castagna cross, and Keller had to touch it around his near post, so it will be a corner to Fulham on the far, or excuse me, on the near side. Uh, I'm watching it on Sky Sports main event, mate. Titan, it is on Sky Sports. Corner here for Fulham. Ball in. Oh, oh! I tell you what, where was the marking? That's, that's... We can't be letting that happen from set pieces. That was way too easy. Ball played in and look at... It's a little run around the back from Jimenez to create the space. And then there, look at that. He pulls away. Gomez looking around thinking who's marking who. Polina gets away from his man. Gomez does... He's two men there. So in fairness to Gomez, which one is he going to go with? We were very lucky that Polina didn't keep that down because that was a good opportunity for Fulham. Yes, Gravenberg. Good play, my man. Diaz. Ball back to Joe. Did you guys have a look at that one? Like, It looked like Joe Gomez was left marking two people and by the time he turned around, Polina had already gotten a yard on him and got that strike away. So we need to be a bit more alert from set pieces. Fulham now get the ball. Move it out left side again to Anthony Robinson. Nothing on for him, so he goes back in field. Polina now. Ball across. Darwin chases down. Here comes the press. Castagna in possession. Lucho presses. Castagna turns him. Plays the ball up the line, but it's too far ahead of the Fulham player. And Virgil van Dijk mops it up. Kwanzaa. Lovely little turn from him. Back to Virgil. Kelleher. Kwanzaa now. Nothing on. Gives it to Gravenberg. Back to Kwanzaa. So show for him. Give him an option. Back with Kelleher. Verge. Now Fulham again have a chance to counter. They work it at left side to Willian. Anthony Robinson on the overlap. Kelleher with a nice touch. Well done, Quivine. It was a great ball in. And Kelleher flies across, gets a touch on it that takes it away from the incoming Fulham attackers. But that all came from a ball into Darwin. We were dispossessed and Fulham countered quickly. Ball to Willian. There comes the overlap and run then from Anthony Robinson. And there's the cross. And thankfully, Quivine was alert. Uh, yes, Jimmy. He is on the bench, mate. Throw in to Fulham. Castagna to take it on this near side. Dick could over read. Polina now. Ball in. Headed away by Jarrell Kwanzaa. Free kick. Referee gives a free kick to Liverpool. Foul on Lucho. Say what you want about Kelleher, but one thing you cannot deny about Creevy and Kelleher is that working with Alison Becker has undoubtedly, undoubtedly improved his beard game. 100%. <coughs> that beard is way better than it used to be. So you can see, obviously, the influence of Alison there. Ball spread out to Diaz. Yes, Lucho, what control. Go on. Oh, it trickles in. We'll take it. 1-0. Lucho with the goal. Oh, we love that. Beautiful bit of control from Lucho. And Leno will be kicking himself because 
it wasn't that powerful a shot. I took a little nick. Leno didn't get there and the ball gets over the line. And it is Liverpool that take the lead on the night. 3-1 now on aggregate. Lucho has started to show that end product that we've been screaming for. But I tell you what. The ball from Kwanzaa, I think it was, and the control from Lucho were absolutely exceptional. Look at this. Is it Kwanzaa? Or is it... Look at that ball from Jarrell Kwanzaa. That's delicious. And the leap from Lucho, the control, and then he cuts inside. Leno's got to do better, but do I care? Not a jot. There we go. It is 1-0. And you know what you can do? You can't blame it on the sunshine. You cannot blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on Lucho. Or if you're a Fulham fan, very much so on Leno. Oh, he should have been doing better, lads. If that's our keeper, I'm having, I'm having words. But there we go. Liverpool do take the lead. And that means that Fulham are definitely going to come on to us now. So let's see how we let's see how we play here. But perfect start. 12 minutes in. Lucho gives us the lead. Fulham nil. Liverpool won. 3-1 now on aggregate. Little bit of a cushion. We love that. Oh, and the Reds go marching in. Oh, when the Reds go marching in. I want to be in that. You know what I'm thinking, don't you? Oh, and the Reds go marching in. Uh, Silva having a word with the fourth official, but I don't know what about because we certainly won't be waiting for VAR. Uh, a pyro's on the pitch, by the way. So I think we're going to have to have a break. And I can probably see a fine coming our way because it looks like it came from the travelling cop. But you know what they say, right? No pyro, no party. Lucho, baby. We love it. The control, though. Ooh, ooh. The control and the, the ball from Kwanzaa. That was, dare I say it, Virgil van Dijk-esque. Trent Alexander-Arnold-esque. Beautiful from young Jarrell Kwanzaa. Great assist. The, the control, though, for me. Oh, so good. So good. I think Craig is delusional. Probably. I think you're a prick. See, I can say stuff as well. That, that calms the nerves a little bit, doesn't it? Verge now in possession. Uh, is Robbo on the bench? Absolutely. He is Haroon, which is brilliant news, isn't it? It's lovely to get that little boost today. See Andy Robertson on the bench. See, the, the weird thing is, right, people say I'm delusional. I don't really take that as an insult as much as I want to know how I'm delusional because I'm definitely delusional, but not on everything. <laughs> My wife will tell you I'm 100% delusional. Kwanzaa with the pinpoint long ball. Yeah, it was amazing, Kin, wasn't it? Absolutely amazing. How much money is Jarrell Kwanzaa going to potentially save Liverpool Football Club? It's um I love I love these little Brucey bonuses when we get a player who comes through the academy and all of a sudden, you know, we're all just thinking, oh hello. And he's definitely one of them. Uh, Craig is the best, better than all the rest. Oh, Jen, don't. You're going to have me singing Tina now. In my head, I'm already singing it, Jen. No, I can't stop it, Craig. Nobody wants to hear you singing Simply the Best. And Bradley. Oh, God. Yes, yes. Bradley. Look, we need a bigger sample size for Connor Bradley. But so far... You can't say he's put a foot wrong. Bradley really has taken the opportunity presented to him at the moment. And um, I'm very happy to see it. Elliot. Did you see the under-18 score against Ajax? I did. Fair to say they've had better days. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for anyone who hasn't seen it, the under-18's got a whooping. 
by Ajax, 8-0. Not great. Inacio or Colwell? Colwell for me, because I know more about Colwell. Um, yeah, I, I would love Liverpool to sign Colwell. Imagine we had a young up-and-coming trio of centre-backs. Uh, it ended up 10-0 in the end, did it? Oh, my days. I only seen it when it got to 8. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, imagine we had a centre-back trio of youthful centre-backs of Colwell, Kwanzaa and Kanade. With the you know, with your Virgil van Dijk, your Joe Gomez as well. That would be amazing. Ten nil. Like we know why X produce good young players, like, but ten nil. So my next question is how many of them have we signed? Because if they're whooping up 10 nil victories against their academy, I do hope our academy director's uh, keeping an eye on a few of those boys. Darwin. Darwin, by the way, is covering every blade of grass here early doors. Popping up left, right and central. McAllister. Bradley. This is what I would call so far a very accomplished performance. You're an absolute legend. Thank you, Tommy. You've put in loads of lovely comments, Tommy. Thank you, mate. Appreciate all your support. Uh, thoughts on Kimmick rumours to Liverpool said Andrew K, who's been a member with us for a month. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'd love it to happen, but you know my gut feeling tells me it's more likely he ends up at Manchester City. But I think it would be a, a very astute bit of business to replace Thiago if you brought in Joshua Kimmich McAllister lovely ball that around the corner to Darwin ball out right Darwin back to Alexis uh, we're all agreed Craig is the best man of people and we love you thank you I will take that Jen we'll take that are we all over them Craig all over them might be a stretch, but value for a lead, yes. Um, but, you know, Fulham are uh, dangerous on the counter, but so are we. And with the two-goal cushion now, you would imagine Fulham are going to have to push on, and that will hopefully leave us a bit of space to exploit in behind. But it's still early doors in this, so you're not going to see Fulham go all out just yet. But they can't get out. We're just pressing them. Winning balls high up the pitch. Kwanzaa again. Great work. Ball out to Diaz left side. A bit of a heavy touch from him. Allows De Cordova Reed to get in and take the ball off him. Verge. To Gakbo. Bradley back inside to Kwanzaa. Elliot's getting booed. I, I, yeah, it's weird, as I said. But also... I guess good because it means they're obviously Ray Elliott I know that doesn't probably make sense oh ball into Darwin he heads it down looking for Ryan Grafenberg unlucky unlucky a little bit ahead of him good to see Darwin playing with a smile on his face as well did you watch that video uh, on Sky the one about hit with him and Diaz was it the friends test or something like that uh, I thought it was quite funny. What are your thoughts on Mo coming back to Liverpool for rehab? Honestly, Jake, my thoughts are whatever is best for the player. So, you know, whatever will get Mo back playing for either Egypt or Liverpool as soon as possible, that's whatever the best decision is for the player. It should be, that's all we, we should be concerned about. Rev and I tell I love that video. It was good, wasn't it? I love they were calling it the old Gojada's dress sense as well. That was funny. Well, given Curtis Jones the accolade of the, the best for fashion sense. Uh, I love you read the comments and not just the super chats. Thank you. Yeah, look, you know, 
you'll always prioritize super chats because people are spending their money but i love interacting with people mate i love that people take the time to be part of our community contribute with comments give their thoughts on the game or a situation and i find it very um easy to just go back and forth and, and interact it's what see i came to youtube completely cold i didn't watch much youtube football content before i started streaming so i never knew what other people did so to me it just came naturally to just talk and i'm not very talented so it makes it easy ball back inside from graffin burke to McAllister. Gets the pitch and wedge out. Goes out right hand side to Connor Bradley. Back to Elliot. How's Robbo settling in? He's on the bench, Jeremy. Um, but it's great news that he's back in the squad. I'm sure he'll probably get some minutes towards the end of the game. What do you think about the Rudiger links? That they're absolute poo poo. You know, before he left Chelsea, he used us as well as a, a club to kind of tempt in offers. And that's all he's doing right now is just using Liverpool to get a better deal out of Madrid. I think, what's this? I think you're a talented. A lot of people could run a channel like you do. Yeah, but I don't do it on my own. You know, there's a team of us that do it. I couldn't do this without Connor, Ben helping out in the background as well. Without those guys, this channel doesn't exist because I'm, I'm a techno moron. <laughs> uh, do I like Dags? Dags? Yeah, Dags. Sure, of course I like Dags. Yes, I love dogs, mate. I've got a French bulldog, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't not have a dog. I love dogs. Uh, and thank you for your super chat Craig Adams Aaron said Nunes 20 goals and assists equals bust Saka 20 goals and assists equals world class I don't get it one bit well I can explain it to you technically Aaron it's that as soon as a player signs for Liverpool they're immediately shit even if the people who are telling them he's crap were begging for their club to sign him that's the law on social media once you sign for Liverpool like I promise you if we signed Mbappe somebody would be trying to make out like he's a flop before he's even kicked the ball you know that's that's the rules on social media and also there's the overhyped English nonsense as well Um what gets me though is when you see Saka who is a very good young player and has you know a lot of uh, good years ahead of him but when you start seeing Arsenal fans talk about him saying he's better than Salah and stuff you're just like nah stop it will you silliness uh, I want to say Craig I found your channel about a month ago uh, it's amazing and you get me into football more thank you Lee Fox I appreciate that so oh oh unlucky Oh, oh, offside flag was up against Gakpo. Quick question. So for those of you that maybe have... Um, I'm going to actually end this poll because I think we figured it out who's going to win. Uh, for those of you who have found the channel over the past couple of months, do you mind me asking um, how you stumbled across the channel? Because, you know, it's always good to know what what's the most impactful way to reach out and try and attract people in. So I'd love to know how you found the channel, if that's possible. Found the compilation of your rages. Sweet. Funny clips. YouTube and Liverpool search. TikTok. Twitter. Okay. TikTok. Who scored? Uh, who scored? Diaz, mate. Lucho with the goal. The kickoff. Ah, interesting. Thank you. Clips. Cool. It's good to know what works. So, next question. Based off the clip that you watched that brought you in to watch the channel, do you find I or the channel is different than you first expected based off the clip? So, I would imagine a lot of people see me screaming, shouting, cursing, getting angry. 
But when you come in, 90% of the time you'll see I'm pretty calm. <laughs> I found you under my sofa. I've been known to be there occasionally, Robert. Next time, dude, would you mind dropping like a biscuit or something on the floor? Because it gets, I get hungry under there. Who's my favourite Liverpool player? Um, So, ever, Robbie Fowler. Uh, of this current incarnation, Alison Becker. Then probably Darwin. Um, Salah. Van Dijk. Apart from Liverpool, who's my favourite team? Barcelona. Luke. Barcelona would be the only other team, really. But I've kind of lost a lot of respect for Barca over the last few years. Darwin! Off the post, Diaz! It's in. Is the flag up? Flag's up. <sighs> Flag's up. Let's have a look. It won't matter because there's no VAR, but... Let's have a look. Yep, yeah, correct decision. Fair play to the linesman. It was the correct decision. Uh, I get so awful up hearing commentators lick City's arse and lie about them talking negatively about Liverpool so I decided to watch a live coverage on YouTube to replace commentary. Love that, Robert. Thank you. Least current favourite Liverpool player, Adrian. Should Darwin have scored? In what sense, Rev and I? I don't, I've yet to see Darwin have a chance that I feel like he should have scored. Van Dijk header. But the ball went out, I think. I have to say, I can get used to this no VAR. It's, uh, it's certainly a more pleasant experience to know that it takes again, like the old days, one glance at the linesman and we know the answer. And again, look at that. That was a tight call, but again, the lino got it spot on against Jimenez. Why Adrian? Uh, Atletico Madrid. Just, it riled me ever since that game, mate. Uh, what did you think about the beef with Owen and Fowler? Beef? Do they have beef? I don't know. Yes, Diaz. Nice little sliding challenge. Love that from Graven Burke. Come on, son. That that's that gives me football wood. When I see a player like Graven Burke did there, look before he receives the ball, and as he's receiving it, shift his body to one side to make a yard of space. That that I love seeing footballers like aware of what's around them and their perif peripheral vision. Um, I love it. Love it. Oh, chance here for Fulham. Jimenez, ball in, cleared by Virgil van Dijk. Love from South Africa, thank you so much. Christian, much love right back to you, my man. We give loads. I think South Africa is now the fourth uh, highest part of the world for people to watch Anfield Agenda. Do I rate Owen? As a footballer, Michael Owen was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um... As a pundit, not not so much. Love from the Chinese down the road. No good showing me love from the Chinese down the road, you know. Love comes in the forms of chicken balls and fried rice, mate. Where does Uganda lie? I, I can't say I've seen Uganda on the list. So, top of the list is the UK. Second on the list is the United States of America. Third on the list is Ireland. Fourth is South Africa. That's the ones I remember when I was looking through the demographics and stuff of where we get watched from. Uh, where did Darwin hit the post from? Was that an easy chance? No, it wasn't an easy chance. But he was also offside, so... 
My favourite team outside of Liverpool is Dortmund. Always love you, never walk alone no matter what league. So you must love Celtic as well then, Scott. Switzerland. I don't you know what, I'll get the stats up while we're talking about it. No problem. By the way, do hit the subscribe button, my friends. I'd love to try and get towards 239 tonight. We are 260 subscribers away from 239. I mean, let me get the stats up for you and I can tell you exactly where the audience was from. Right, so they only give you about 10 or 11. So uh, there's Robbo, look at him. How good is that, by the way? How good is it to see Andy Robertson there? Look, it'd be better to see him on the pitch, but look, I'll take it. Jimenez, good save by Kelleher. And Bradley, look at that. Well done, Connor Bradley. So, oh, here we go. Unlucky. Right, so the United Kingdom, 39% of our audience watch from the United Kingdom. The United States makes up 8.3% of our audience. Ireland, 7%. South Africa, 5.2%. Australia, 3.1%. India, India are our sixth. India, we get 2.4% of our audience from India. Malaysia, 2.2%. Canada, 1.9%. Singapore, 1.5%. And Jamaica, 1.4%. One two between Bradley and Gakpo. Gakpo then plays it out of Anthony Robinson for a Liverpool throw in on the far side. Do I like GAA? Absolutely, yes, sir. Wouldn't say I watch it religiously, but that wasn't the question. So, my friends, if you live in America and you are somewhere around the Boston area and you would like to come and see us live, we are gonna be at the Foundation Room in the House of Blues in Boston. March 22nd for a live show. The tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster. It's uh, it's scary as hell putting up a show in America or anywhere outside of Ireland because you don't know who's going to show up or if anyone will show up. So, Ticketmaster, you'll find the link. Get yourselves uh, a little ticket. Come see us March 22nd if you're in that part of the world. Oh, Carney now for Fulham. Liverpool have forced them back a bit. They could overread. And also, shout out to our Clips channel, which is absolutely flying at the minute. We repurposed the Clips channel recently. What are you doing in the live show? It'll be a mixture of kind of my opinions on things, behind the scenes information about the channel and my life, I guess. Some, obviously, lots of talk about Liverpool, lots of interaction with the audience. Um, it'll just be like a relaxed, fun evening where we all get to kind of chat, get to know each other. Like the one in Dublin was great fun. Will there be a full Monty? If we sell out, which we won't do by the way, but... Gravenberg couldn't keep that in. Fulham take the throw in quickly. Don't fell. Yes, well done, ref. Telling him to get up. Kelleher struggling today. No, sorry, that's bullshit. And what? That's no. You're getting timed out for that nonsense. Sorry, that's bullshit. I'd love to know in what world Kelleher's struggling when he's made great saves and blocked some good crosses. It's just silliness. Do you think Liverpool will win the Europa League at Cotton LFC? I hope so. You know, there's the incentive of the final being in Dublin, which is um, as close to a home game, I think, as Liverpool might get in the final. So I very much want us to be there. Look, the idea of Liverpool lifting a European trophy in the city I grew up in would be awesome. What game is he watching? It's, he's either trying to bait me into getting angry at him or he has an agenda that no matter what somebody does. But I would say he's probably trying to bait me, to be honest, because he knows I've been pretty defensive of Kelleher. But, you know, 
through any metric looking at him tonight, how you could say other than he's done what he's supposed to do tonight is uh, so far it would be just a stretch. He's not done nothing brilliant, but he's certainly not made any errors. Is Trent and Solbeslai back for Norwich? Uh, according to Pep Linders yesterday, Lee, yes. Fulham in possession now, centre of the park. <clears throat> Press comes on from Elliot. Fulham forced into a quick clearance, but it kind of works out well for them. Now Anthony Robinson goes out left to William. Back to Anthony Robinson, cross in. Good bit of defender from Virgil van Dijk. And the clearance is finished by Mr. Cody Gakpo. We Americans love you. I'm from Oklahoma. I tried to get to Boston. Oh, please do, my man. It'd be lovely to see you, Scott. And um, I certainly love visiting America. I go over as often as I can. I'm going to be in America twice this year, actually. I'm going to catch up with LFC USA. Brian, we're going to spend five days in Vegas in October. So that's going to be fun. But uh, Boston is March. And if you are in that neck of the woods, it'd be great for you to come along if you could. You're from Boston, Darwizzi. Well then, why haven't you got a ticket? Huh? Come on, dude. Craig, in my opinion, I don't want to jinx it, but Anthony Taylor's not doing bad tonight. Considering Anthony Taylor's not on the pitch, I'd say he probably isn't. It's Simon Hooper. Uh, again, though, all jokes aside, easy to confuse ball referees and all, but it's Simon Hooper tonight, mate, not Anthony Taylor. But you are right in what you've said. Uh, drama Norway in the house Sandra thank you so much for watching obviously Norway is a hotbed of Liverpool fans VVD is incredible yeah he is hardly gets talked about for Man of the Mass because he's so good consistently so I've got to put my hands up to that one Gmu and say I'm definitely part of that problem so when I look at Van Dijk and Salah I judge them way differently to everybody else because they are, you know, gods. So sometimes what I take for granted from them, I would give somebody else loads of praise for. And I've, I've tried to kind of, you know, catch myself onto that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely guilty of that myself because, you know, ver if... If Jarrell Conza was doing what Virgil would be doing, I'd be like, oh my God, he's the best thing in the world. So yeah, you're right. I need to stop taking him for granted. Harvey needs to be subbed for another per performance. Okay, sure thing, mate. I'm not biting on that, sorry. Uh, the thing is, to say anybody out there tonight is having a per performance is more reflection on you than the player because there's nobody out there who's not pulling their weight tonight. Gomez! Oh! Oh, it's coming, isn't it? It's going to happen. He's getting that goal. And he probably thinks Rob was nearly back now, so this left-back position is going to be gone in a minute. So, um, yeah, he's probably going to say, we're going to get that goal. Uh, we've switched off. Have we? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just glossing over some stuff because we're winning and we've got a two-goal cushion and I'm happy about that, but... You meant the atmosphere seems to get to him. Ah, see, that's understandable, Ali. If that's what you meant, mate, I get where you're coming from. Sing the VVD chant. One sec. Ball in. He's a centre half. He's a number four. Watch him defend. And we watch him score. He'll pass the ball. Come as you like. Who is he? He's Virgil van Dijk. 
He's Virgil van Dyke. Now I need the Jamie Webster fast guitar. Oh, referee's going to the book here. Tiny going on like somebody's just murdered his dog in front of him with the <gasps> gone full Tiago there, Kearney. He gets a yellow for a foul on um Alexis and he goes full Tiago. <gasps> Me Oh Let's have a look at this though. I mean, it's, it's a foul. There's nothing vicious about that at all. It's a foul and a yellow. I think that's fair, but it's never a red. I mean, nowhere near it. Most likely the follow-through with the left foot that took the standing leg out from McAllister, I'd say, there. But he's still down getting treatment, Alexis. They're again showing us the Diaz goal. And that control. The ball from Kwanzaa and the control from Diaz. I could just watch all day. It's so good. The leap from Lucho to control it the way he did. Um, beautiful. Look, Leno should have done better. But commentator said it's not a foul. See, I think... The follow-through left leg may have made contact with him. But look, it is... You, you can definitely say, okay, yellow's a bit harsh. I, I can understand that. It definitely wasn't dangerous or Kearney didn't do... If, we, if the ref just gave a free there and nothing else, I don't think we'd be too unhappy with it. Um, Hang on. What? What? No, 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 no. No. Why is McAllister being asked to go off the pitch? He was booked. Once the player's booked, you don't have the 30-second bullshit. So why is Alexis being forced to go off? I thought they changed that rule. Am I wrong here? Or was the rule not? If you're fouled and the player gets a yellow, you don't have to go off the pitch for the 30 seconds. Am I wrong in that? Or I'm sure that that rule was changed. It's the rule. No, 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 no. It's the rule if there's not a booking. If you go down injured or whatever, you go off the pitch for 30 seconds, but not when the player gets a booking. Can somebody Google that and check for me? Because I'm sure that rule was changed. Now, maybe because this is the League Cup, it's different or something I don't know. But it used to be that everyone had to go off. Then they brought it in, say, if there was a yellow, the player didn't have to go off. Uh, no, Alexis isn't injured, mate. He's back on the pitch. So, Tommy said, as a referee, you're right. Yellow card means you don't have to go. I'll take all the apologies in the chat from the people who, again, doubt my, my fucking genius. Do you know what I mean? I know it's a burden having so much knowledge inside this head, but... And thank you, Tommy, to give us a referee's perspective on that one. Now, look, with football, you never know. The, God, the, the rules are changing by the day sometimes, so... Um, five minutes added on at the end of the first half. Just again, though, if that is the case, it's so hilarious. The PG, um, MOL just still giving these absolute spoofers jobs. You inspired me to make a channel for my local Welsh football team. And I get to interview the players now. I'm only 14. That's brilliant, mate. Well in. Um, and I wish you every success with it. And thank you for um, 
thank you for letting us know man that's brilliant and i wish you all the best with it and uh yeah have fun why do you love nunes so much because i want to shag him i don't know i just have this thing where i've always been um i've always been inspired by flawed geniuses and for him it's kind of that way i know he's not perfect but that's why i love him same with bobby bobby was a similar thing i love bobby because of the whole package you know Corner in, ball cleared. Gakpo tries to clear it out, but it's put back in. Then Bradley gets a clearance. Elliot's fell there, ref. Any chance? No. We've had two minutes of the five minutes added on. What's your opinion on the orange card? It's just a nonsense matrix, mate. It's just more changing stuff for the sake of it. Nothing wrong with the yellow and red system. Oh, unlucky. Ball in. Gravenberg tried to go with his left foot. Couldn't quite make the right contact. And it's cleared by Fulham. Liverpool throw in. Bobby had no imperfections. He was just perfect. Well, he was caught drink driving, mate. I classed that as a bit of a flaw. And some of his fashion choices with baseball hats and furry coats were questionable. But as I said, that's why I loved them. Not because of the drink driving part. But you get me. You wanted him out two weeks ago. Did I though, Jer? Or are you talking out your arse again? And talking about one clip. I can show you a hundred clips, Jer. Where I praise him to the end of the earth. And tell other people to get off his back. But I guess Jer only jumps in with uh, his little sp spat that he's seen on TikTok, Jer. Or wherever it is you've seen me. And yeah. I was angry at him and Salah when we drew with United because it was shambolic. But um, again, stop trying to be clever, Jer. You're not. And Jer, do you want to give me every one thing in your life you've ever had an opinion on? I'll just judge you for forever and say that's the only opinion you're allowed to have. For instance, I'm sure if you've got a wife, Jer, you probably have called her a bit of a bitch occasionally. But I'm sure you still love her nonetheless. Same as I do with my wife. But... Again, people always want to just take that one thing. Because they always want to shit on you. Everybody wants to run you down. And they take that one thing and they think they get to judge you for it forever. You don't, Jer. That's the thing, mate. You don't. You don't know me. You know nothing about me. And your opinion of my opinion of Darwin is flawed. But that's all right. I'm here to educate. Fulham on the attack again. Left side. We've kept Anthony Robinson relatively quiet tonight, which is a good thing, because he worries me. Him and Willian down that left side definitely um, worry me. I don't know what that word is, mate. Sorry. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you, dude. Free kick to Fulham here. We've almost had the five minutes of stoppage time at the end of the first half. Who's my favourite band? I don't know if I have one. I mean, Oasis will probably be the answer, but they're not together anymore, so. Simon Hooper just telling Pereira he's on his last warning before a yellow. One thing we learned from that little exchange there is that Simon Hooper can definitely count to three. Is there any inspiration behind your tattoos? Not really, Harry. I wish there was, mate. But nah, there isn't really. Right, last bit of defending to do before half time. Liverpool holding a really high line here, but 10 yards ahead of the 18 yard box. Out comes Kelleher to deal with that. And then Simon Hooper puts the whistle to his lips. It is half time at Craven Cottage. Liverpool lead on the night, a goal from Lucho Diaz. 1 0, but 3 1 on aggregate after the first leg. So, yeah, let's have a chat. What are we thinking? What do you do if you're Jurgen Klopp here? Um, you don't want to say we're there because two goals 
in 45 minutes is a very achievable thing, but certainly we are um, we're on the right track. Besides the fact that Simon Hooper is a robber during the Spurs game, he's the only ref that doesn't back from players, to be honest. Doesn't back from players? I don't know what you mean by that. Um, <coughs> look, that thing about Simon Hooper and the Diaz goal, it wasn't all on Simon Hooper. Like, that's the VAR operators that shit the bed there. More than Simon Hooper for me. Now, the red cards, they where I had more of an issue with Hooper. Do I use a green screen? Yes, sir. What are the chances of Simon Hooper being the ref and Paul Tierney on VAR for the City game? Oh, I'm, I'm, Harry, it's honestly... <sighs> Am I the only one who thinks that the PGMOL are taunting us with Paul Tierney at this point? I mean, I, I thought somebody was winding me up when they sent me the referee list for the Chelsea game and I seen that Paul Tierney was in charge. It genuinely astounds me uh the referees for the norwich city game referee is going to be sam barrett assistant referees mark perry and mark stevens fourth official craig pawson var will be tim robinson uh support var stuart atwell and assistant var mark skulls thank you mark for sending me on that it's a disgrace craig well has it been spoken about much on social media? Because obviously I'm not on Twitter, and so I don't see. But I would hope that, you know, all of us as Liverpool fans, you know, content creators, podcasts, whatever, I like to think that we can all kick up enough fuss that something has to get looked at. Like, we're not imagining it. We're not trying to just find faults and have a pop for no reason like it is very clear that whether it's intentional or not it doesn't really matter but Paul Tierney's decision making when he referees Liverpool or when he's involved in Liverpool games the statistics show very clearly that we're not getting a fair shake even compared to how we referees other big six teams there are huge anomalies that are pointed out very very well by Paul Tompkins and his great work in that article which is there for anyone to read I know it's a paid site to Tompkins Times, but this particular article is free. So if you get a chance, Google Paul Tompkins' um, article on Paul Tierney and it lays it out for you way, way, way better than the ramblings of me. Because look, I get it. People can look at me and think I just, I have a thing about Tierney or whatever. But when you see the numbers and you see the emotion removed from it, it's pretty transparent. Now, of course... Paul looks at just the numbers. Paul doesn't try to find or include any of his own inbuilt thought processes. He just looks at the numbers. And that's what I love about Paul Tompkins is that, you know, he doesn't put emotions into his work. He just relies on the numbers and for patterns to emerge. And in this case, I think it's pretty clear. Liverpool hadn't scored a first half goal since the 26th of December. Wow. That's um that's actually mad. If Kelleher goes, who would you want as the backup? I don't know, Connor. Um there's been a lot of talk about the keeper, the Sunderland keeper is a Patterson. Um yeah, I, I really don't know, mate. I wouldn't. It's not like any other position, you know. It's a very difficult one to figure out a reserve keeper who would come in. So you either end up looking at most of the time a young keeper who's, you know, still making their way in the game or a keeper who's at the tail end of their career. So I don't know. It's a tough one. Uh, what about promoting Pitta? Pitaluga, again, I'm going to try and get out to watch him with St. Patrick's Athletic. Myself and Connor are going to try and get to a game to watch Pitaluga up close. Um, Yaros obviously has gone on, if I'm not mistaken, he went to, he went somewhere in Austria, didn't he? 
The commentators on Bean Sport are so anti Liverpool, it's disturbing. Why do they find these boys? Oh, if you're talking about keys, if you're talking about old hairy hands, um, yeah, look, I don't know if it's keys and grey, but Richard Keys has form for a lot of things, um, particularly marrying his daughter's friend when his missus was uh, recovering from cancer, I think he was um, accused of playing away. That's without the misogyny and all the other shit that you come along with Richard Keyes. But he's basically been frog marched out of England, basically, because nobody would employ him. So we went off to Doha and being sports were, I guess, stupid enough to give him a job. Just Google it yourself. Just Google anything about him. You'll find all the information he's a he's a particularly clinty individual greasy character yes there we go connor and he and connor connor you like this one mate he does not know his onions Craig is a tierney stunt double. You're something that rhymes with stunt. You're welcome. What position do we need in the summer the most? Um, <coughs> I say centre back. Because you look at who's departing, um, you know, we're going to lose Matt Tip, his contract's up, unless for some stupid reason it's renewed. And and Thiago, so you're looking at those two to be probably replaced with experience. So, yeah. And then, of course, we have to have a conversation about what happens with Seth Vandenberg. And uh, now that, I don't know if that line about Vinny Jr. is true. But if Real Madrid are open to selling Vinicius Jr., then um, bring it in, Vinny. Come on. Bring it in. Because I, I wouldn't say no to a bit of Vinny Jr. if he's up for sale. I wish you could do a show in South Africa. So do I. Mate, I love to visit South Africa. My psychologist that I see every couple of weeks is from uh, South Africa as well. So, yeah, I'd love to go. Did you see Mikel Antonio on the Sky Sports studio? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, I'm just glad I don't have the commentary on. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to be uh, listening to Mikel Antonio's... Well, you know, as he start crying yet? Because obviously he's very upset that Fulham at this point aren't going through. Maybe himself and Danny Murphy can start a support group where they can go and cuddle each other and um, let it all out. You know, but it's good to talk, lads. It's good to talk. Vinny Jr. has a 1 billion release clause. Yeah, but if Real Madrid are actively wanting to sell him, then no one's going near the release clause. They have to come up with a realistic number. So... You know, if they want Mbappe to come in and Vinicius Jr. to go bye-bye, then it has to be a realistic number. Best place for a point in Dublin? Oh, I'm not the one to give you that answer, mate. I don't really drink, so... Uh, yeah. I mean, I've lived in the town I'm in now... Just about 13, 14 years. And I've been in, I think, pubs... Sort of twice. Once for a 40th birthday party of a neighbour. And once to book accommodation for a relative who was coming down and you know those rooms above the pub so you know, i'm not the person to give you those answers definitely not temple bar definitely not temple bar steve 100 percent not temple bar if you like being raw dogged in the wallet temple bar but i feel like i have to apologize to everybody that visits ireland for temple bar because it is absolutely disgustingly like the paddy wackery is there in full effect but my god the prices are disgusting so yeah avoid temple bar like the plague 
I would say get yourself down to Wexford Street, Camden Street, um, some really good pubs along Wexford Street in particular. Have I visited Singapore? I haven't, no, Harry, I haven't, no. I've not had the pleasure of going to anywhere around Asia yet. Certainly on my to-do list, though. Temple Bar is a scam. The only time I ever went near Temple Bar was when I was going to Defontaine's for a slice of pizza after uh, after a night out drinking somewhere else. But, yeah, man. We had people come over for the Dublin show. Um, Luke, if you're watching, Hello. And you remember Luke said to me he had to go to Temple Bar to have a point. His dad said to him you should definitely go to Temple Bar to have a point. And I think Luke said it was like about 11 euro for a point of Guinness. And it still haunts me to this day thinking of foreign visitors coming across to our beautiful little country and being met with those prices in Temple Bar. It's it's so bad. What a good pizza place. Oh, Johnny, it was amazing. D Fontaine's was was best pizza. Loved it. I don't know if it still exists, but it's owned by Huey from the Fun Loving Criminals. Best pizza. I loved it. Used to get a slice there on the way home all the time. Like where I live, my daughter said it's five fifty a pint for a lager. Um, you know, because she goes to pubs, so five euro fifty down here for a pint. Is Temple Bar Connor's place? Oh God, no! Connor lives in Wexford, but um, even further away from Dublin than I do. Ireland use euro, yes, mate. We we have electricity and everything, running water, the whole lot. Um, yes, we use euro. We've used euro since I think it was a what ninety nine, two thousand, something like that. Um, we used to have the Irish punt. I said punt. As in P-U-N-T. Used to be the name of our currency. Um, Who's your man of the match? It's halfway through, but... Mm. Probably... Verge, Kwanzaa, or Diaz, I think. Um... They've all impressed me. What was your best subject in school? Uh, French and business studies were the two I got the highest grades in. I was so bad in like biology, uh, maths, awful. English grammar was terrible. Um, Geography, I was never too good at. History, I wasn't great at. It would have to be a punt to say 11 quid for a point. It gets dearer after midnight, I think, as well. Uh, took a trip to Dublin, found myself in a pub called Cobblestone, Boss Live Music and Vibe. Yeah, there's some really cool boozers around Dublin. Like I used to go, When I used to go out in Dublin when I was younger, I'd always go to Wexford, Camden Street. Uh, some really nice pubs there with, as you said, some good live music and stuff as well. Do I, did I go to a Christian Brothers school? I did. I went to Oatlands College in Stilorgan. What pizza would you say describes you? Margarita. Simplicity but perfection at the same time, eh? Do you know what I mean? Simple but perfect. Right. Second half's about to get underway. As it currently sits, the Reds are 45 minutes away from another visit to Wembley. Where Chelsea away, so let's wait and see what happens. Uh, what about Bradley Craig? He could have been man of the match of the weekend. Brilliant player, Wayne. Delighted to see him come through. Uh, and he's definitely grasped his opportunity with both hands. So, yeah, delighted. Do I like burgers? Oh, yes, mate. I love a bit of beef. I do. I love burgers, yeah. Bacon and cheeseburger is heaven. Right. Fulham kicking off, second half, playing from right to left. Just got to wait for a couple of people to get off the pitch and we're good to go. Right, we're on the way, second half. Fulham go back to Leno, who does the decent thing and launches the ball long left-hand side. 
where it goes out of play for a Liverpool throw-in. Just a reminder, after the game, as always, we're going to have a recorded match reaction, recorded player ratings, and then about, about half past ten or so, we'll be back live for a, a fan reaction show. Graven Burke now brings it away, plays the ball into the left channel to Diaz. Diaz cuts back inside. Oh, he squares it. Should have probably shot. Gakpo back to Elliot. Oh, it was a wasted chance. Unselfish from um, Diaz in a time where maybe should have been selfish. You need to try a Durban curry. I'm a pussy when it comes to food, mate. I'm so boring, so plain, so cowardly. Right, we'll get a sink up in a second for anyone that needs to sink. We'll just let it get to 46 minutes 30. I haven't had a Supermax in a very long time, Marley, but there's one coming to Dublin Airport. Um, They're putting in a Supermax, I think, in Terminal 2. Where Rights of Hoth is now, I think it's gone. Right, so 46 minutes 30, 31, 32, 33... 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Really excited to see Robo come on. Yeah, it's so cool to see him back. Definitely the um, the big bonus of today is seeing Andy Robertson back there warming up on the sidelines. Do I see Robertson coming on? Don't know. I hope so. What's my favourite food? Oh, pizza. Mate, pizza is without a doubt my favourite food. Gomez. To Diaz. Have a korma. They're not hot or spicy. Um, I've tried a korma before. I found it um, me. Ball back with Kelleher into McAllister. What's my match day food? I, I don't eat till 1 a.m., mate, so um, I don't really eat during game times, right? And, I only eat once a day and that's about 1am and so probably toasted ham and cheese. Who's my favourite footballer of all time? Probably Maradona. Maradona or Messi? Craig, love you and we all have to love this score right now. Oh Adam, it's brilliant. It's nice to be relaxed at this moment in time but you know Again, one goal for Fulham and maybe the the game changes a little bit psychologically, but it's got one of those next get next goals huge, right? If we get it, it's game set and match. If Fulham get it, maybe they get their tails up and we get a bit nervy, I don't know, but I still love the position we're in. Gomez now. He's defo trying for a goal, isn't he? That time he gets a strike, but it's high and wide. What do I think of... Do you think Alisson is Ballon d'Or level? It's... No. It's very hard for keepers to win Ballon d'Ors. Um, and for him to do it, you'd want Liverpool to be winning the Champions League or Brazil to win a World Cup or something in that season. For a goalkeeper to get it, like you'd want to be... A, like ridiculously stand out because it's like such an unsexy position right for fans they could overread he has a strike it's blocked and Lucho puts it behind it'll be a full corner like he's good enough don't get me wrong he's the best keeper in the world but mm, it's very difficult for a keeper to win a Ballon d'Or
he isn't first keeper for Brazil. That's because the Brazilian manager was a moron. Um. Yeah. Like, nobody will ever convince me Ederson's near quality of Alisson. He is Alisson with the ball at his feet, but Alisson is a better all-round game. Oh, unlucky. Anthony Robinson back there for Fulham. Pressure on. Go on, keep pressing, Harvey. Go on. Where did I play when I played football? When you say where, do you mean position or club? I was a keeper. Diaz. Ball across. Oh, flick. Unlucky. Unlucky, Gakbo. Goal kick. Who do you think is a better player currently, Kanade or Saliba? Oh. Mm. I don't know if there's much to split them, to be fair. I rate them both very highly. Um, I'm probably biased in saying on Kanate because I'm a Liverpool fan, but I, I have to say, like I do really, really, really rate Saliba. I think he's a very, very good defender. Uh, Aaron said, Hey, Craig, just got engaged to my fiance Victoria, at the Eiffel Tower on Saturday. If you're a minister, I beg you to marry us and do Ric Flair. Tap me in. Put me in, coach. I will go full Joey from Friends and get um, ordained in whatever it is that you need me for, Aaron. Sign me up, mate. I will absolutely do that wedding. No problem. That's We're missing an Anfield agenda wedding, so 100%. So, yeah, put me in. Put me in, coach. And congratulations, man. That's awesome. Oh, Fulham fit the post. Oh, Kelleher came for a ball he didn't get. Ball came to Fulham and they hit the post. Now Liverpool are on the counter down the other end. Slipped into Elliot. Hit it. Oh, it's weak. Weak strike and easy to save for Leno with his feet. But again, just gives a reminder to Fulham that if they do leave themselves exposed looking for this goal, that we can um, counter-attack ourselves quickly. But I'd like to see a replay of... Of that ball in that Kelleher came for and didn't get. Here we go now. Yeah, that's weak, Kelleher. You gotta be getting to that, bud. And Pereira it was actually that hits the post. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kelleher. You can't be coming for that and not getting it, dude. Yeah, we got lucky there. Kelleher was a no man's land. Right, 54 minutes on the clock. Still as we were, Liverpool 1-0 up. Shirt off if Gomez scores. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Shirt off if league titles won. Elliot. Out left side to Grafenberg. Brooklyn in the house. How are we, William? Brooklyn, William. That's not too far from Boston. Have you bought a ticket to the Boston show, William? I'd love to see you in Boston, mate. Get yourself over to the Ticketmaster. 22nd of March, bud. Who would you start in the final? Or would I start Ali in the final? Or would I? Yes. <laughs> I've had to say I would. Like, it's not my decision and it would probably be Kelleher. But would I start Alisson? Yes, I would. Because, look, honestly... Alisson's the number one. And in the final, you'd want the number one to play. But in fairness, we've been pretty consistent of making sure Kelleher plays. So, But, Cuivre did play in goal when we beat Chelsea on penalties in the final as well. So, J 
Gerard, Iniesta or Javi. I love them all, Ronan. They're all incredible. Or they were all incredible football players. Um, obviously, I like Gerard because of the style that he brought to how we played and the kind of physical aspect of it. But Xavi and Iniesta were just exceptionally... just skillful, tactically astute, um, technically amazing, just um, incredible footballers, incredible. I think I know one were hard done by VAR, said William. I, I could tell you the answer to that very quickly, mate, and that's because the PGMOL's officials are, at best, subpar. Did we all forget what the like button is, said Colin. Yeah, Colin, take, pulling no punches, mate. I love it. Zidane or Cruyff. I didn't get to watch Johan Cruyff play football and I don't ever give judgments on players I haven't watched myself. Um, so. Did Lucas have a good birthday? He did, thank you, yes. We brought him to Eddie Rockets and um, he was wolfing into some hot dogs and burgers. So yes, he had a, a nice day. Thank you for asking. Will I eat broccoli if Liverpool win the league? Absolutely not. Go on, start it. Well done, ref. Good advantage played. Go on, Lucho. Lucho, ball into the left channel. Ooh, unlucky Darwin. Forced Leno into a save. Good counter attack again. Good advantage played by the referee, in fairness to Simon Hooper. And um, good play by Diaz. Gets back up after being fouled. Then plays the ball into Darwin in the left channel. Nunes cuts inside on his right foot. Good strike. And Leno gets a decent. Hand to it and touches it around the post for Liverpool corner. What front three would I start in the final? Um, Salah, Diaz, Darwin. McAllister with a corner. Headed away at the near post by Anthony Robinson. It's with Connor Bradley now. He goes back to Alexis McAllister. Little roll there. Love that from Alexis. Wins it back. Well in Alexis. Then he takes too long. That extra touch allowed the defenders to close him down. It's all right though. Because Gravenberg's won it back. Cross in. Headed away by Fulham. Again though Liverpool have it. This time Cody Gakpo. Inside to Diaz. Slips a nice ball into Gakpo. Dinks one to the far post. Oh. Kwanzaa headed it down, but we still have it with Diaz. Darwin, Diaz, out left-hand side now to Elliot. And that'll be a throw into Liverpool on the far side as we approach the hour mark. It's exciting stuff, right? We're closing in on a first final of the season. I love it. I love knowing that we've got uh, potentially got a final to look forward to. Against, of course, Chelsea. It's always us and Chelsea, isn't it, in the League Cup? Bradley. Elliot. We've managed this game really well. Do you know why fans are booing Elliot? Yes, because he left Fulham to join Liverpool. Which again, I find really weird. Because as I keep saying, it's not like he left them for a local rival. He left them for the team that he supported all his life. How long will Salah be out for? Um, I think, what was it? 21, 28 days? Was the prognosis, I believe. If it wasn't for Trippier's mistake, we play Newcastle. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, David. Yeah, yeah, right in the very, very end of that game as well, wasn't it? Very, very death. 
of the game. That's and it went straight to penalties. Yeah, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I hate playing Chelsea. Why does it always have to be them? Don't know, but I'm with you. I hate it because. For me, Chelsea are almost the exact opposite of everything Liverpool stands for, to me. So, yeah, they're always very close games as well. I'd love to just go and batter them and beat them 3-4-0. Bradley, Gakpo, or excuse me, Diaz, Gakpo. Fulham look to play out now. Again, look at that. Closing there. Look at how high up the pitch we're winning that back. Bradley and McAllister winning it back. Like, inside the Fulham half. That's just great football, boys. Ball it out to Darwin, left side. That's class. <laughs> then a couple of players bundle over each other and eventually the referee gives a free kick to Fulham. Are we winning the league? Um, I hope so, Jane. But, you know, you can't say we are at this point. But we're in a very good position. We've given ourselves a really good chance. So far, so good, though. I mean, Fulham have been kept relatively quiet here in the second half. Other than that opportunity where Kelleher came and didn't get there. Oh, lucky. It's a little bit behind Elliot again. Referee gives a free kick to Fulham, though. 28 minutes plus stoppage time to go. Still 1-0 on the night to Liverpool. 3-1 on aggregate. As it stands, um, we are on course to face Chelsea at Wembley. I'm Irish, but I still love your accent. Thank you, David. I don't know what my accent is, by the way, David, because it's not very Dublin. It's definitely not Wicklow or Wexford. So I've never really... Yeah, I don't know what my accent is. Even I think I do have a weird accent for an Irish person. Oh. Oh! So close from Darwin. Oh, so close. Ball ricocheted. <laughs> Excuse me. To Darwin. He turns a couple of times and then eventually... Get your shot away. Oh, it's not far away, that. It's a dub accent for sure. It is and it isn't. Like, it's a little Dublin-y, but it's not like, what's the story? Are you well? Get the fuck up out. It's, no, it's not like real strong Dublin. Like, my dad had a very, I guess what you call old Dublin accent. Like, kind of uh, runny Drewy type Dublin accent. Unlucky Joe. Joe seems on a mission to score, by the way. Even trying to take on people now and get past them. I think Jota deserves more love. To be fair, I think that Diogo gets plenty of love. Um, certainly recently, lots of people have been very complimentary of how ruthless that Diogo Jota has been. The man is in a very good vein of form. And you're right, he deserves lots of credit. But I, I do think he gets it. You're an outskirts of Dublin accent. Yeah, because that's where I'm from. So I'm from Shankill. So that's the last town in Dublin before you hit Wicklow. So that makes sense. Twenty five to go. Bit of Kildare. I don't know, maybe. Offside there against Gakpo. What made you move to a different part of Ireland? Um, affordability, pretty much, to be honest with you. Like, if I was to try and buy a house in the area I grew up in, you're looking about four to 450,000 euro. So, yeah, it's affordability. I can't afford to live in Dublin. But also, I love where I live. I think the town I live in is brilliant. Uh, 
The only accent I can think of like yours is Jacksepticeye. Isn't he from Sligo or somewhere? I think myself and Jacksepticeye have very different accents if I'm not mistaken. We are similar though, Jacksepticeye, only for I have a septic jack... I'm saying nothing. I'm saying nothing. Would I take Polina at Liverpool? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say no, but I wouldn't be paying the 60 million for a 29 year old. He's from Awfully, is he? Sorry, I'm awfully sorry. Here comes Harry Wilson on to replace Bobby De Cordova Reed. Biggest fan from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Would fit in perfectly here, Craig. Thank you, Patrick. Um, don't not sure I could watch the Steelers play though, mate. I love the defensive energy, but not attacking enough. Paul, never been to Pittsburgh, but never say never. Right here we go. It's just a time. How many of you are thinking about hammer hammer time now? Come on, be honest. Right. So Curtis Jones, Diogo Jota on for Darwin Nunez and Alexis McAllister. Here we go. If in doubt, bring on the ninja. Bring on the assassin. Germany's in the house. Thank you so much. Uh, Lugine, appreciate your support. Elliot. I have to say, I'm so pleasantly surprised with, with the Jones thing. I was sure Jones was going to be out for a little bit um, after he went off the pitch against Bournemouth. So it's really positive to see him back out there already. Is Verstappen better than Hamilton? I don't know, man. I don't know enough about F1 to tell you the answer. Do you support an Irish team? I wouldn't say support, because I think that's very undermining of the match going, you know, hardcore supporters. But I do keep an eye out for a team, and that's Shelburne. Here's Jota. Ball back in. Little flick from Lucho. Still Lucho. Bradley goes on the overlap. He plays it in to Elliot, Lucho, Jones, Jota. Referee brings it back for a foul on Polina from Jota. Who's off? Um, who went off again? Darwin and Alexis McAllister. Would you say we have the best attack depth in the league? Yes, I would. From South Africa, love your content. Thank you, Keegan. Appreciate you watching, my friend. It really does mean a lot to us. By the way, folks, let's hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. I want to see how close we are. One second. We are 180 away from getting to 239,000. So if you have not subscribed, guys, please do. Be lovely to hit that tonight. I love doing these extra numbers when we're on a stream. Always feels like more of an accomplishment for some reason than if you uh, it updates overnight or something. I always feels like an anticlimax. So if you haven't sub, please do. Do I support any Irish teams? Uh, I was just asked at a moment ago. Shelburne would be the answer. What do I think of Driscus Duplessis? Um, I don't watch enough of the US, UFC to know uh, too much about it, but the few fights I've watched them in over the years, he seemed very impressive. Ooh, strike from distance there for Ryan Gravenberg. Leno was scrambling, but it goes wide of his post. Should a full Irish breakfast have baked beans? Yes, for me, because I love baked beans. So my like dream breakfast... Sausages, back bacon, you can keep your streaky nonsense. Sausages, back bacon, beans, a potato farrel, because I love potato farrels, and uh, brown soda bread. That's that's a perfect fry for me. I don't eat eggs, don't eat tomatoes, don't eat mushrooms. Will you go for the Chiefs in the NFL? No. So it's um, it came down to two teams for me, and it was either... The Houston Texans or the Green Bay Packers. 
And the answer is probably the Green Bay Packers because that's the one I feel a weirdly emotional connection to. But I decided to pick the Texans just to be contrary because I don't know any um, Houston Texans fans. And I like CJ Stroud. But I think the Packers are probably be the one that I feel um, a bit of an emotional connection to. Because it was Aaron Rodgers that really got me into watching NFL. Like, watching him play, I just... Him and Adams, I just loved the, the connection the two of them had. Favourite dessert? All of them. <laughs> um, I'm a sucker for anything with apple. So, um, apple crumble, apple tart, apple, apple anything. Tart tatan, apple... Anything with apple in it, I love Steve's a Houston Texans fan. There we go. Well, you must be looking forward to life with CJ Stroud, mate, because he looks legit. I don't like tiramisu, actually, Christian. I don't like coffee in my dessert. Hey, Paul, why did they take off Dar when he was having a good game? I would imagine it's just to give them a breather when, you know, we've got lots of games coming up and just being cautious because you want Darwin there next week for the game against Chelsea and then, of course, the trip to Arsenal. So... That's all I can think of, mate. It's just precautionary. And always lovely to see you, Paul. Thank you. Have I been to Sligo? Weirdly, I got my very first Liverpool jersey in Sligo when I was uh, eight years of age. We was my birthday. We went to Sligo for a weekend, stay in the hotel. My parents brought me and... Oh... My dad brought me into a sports shop and I picked my first football jersey and it was the grey candy Liverpool one. So Sligo will always have that little connection with me. I don't like pudding, Mar Marley. Don't eat black or white pudding. Where is Stab City? Limerick. But I think that's very unfair of Limerick, which is certainly uh, a beautiful city. Elliot now on the attack. Into Gakpo. Back to Bradley. Jones. Have I ever been to Cork? Yeah, yeah. Loads of times, mate. Um, I try to get to Foda at least once a year anyway. I love Foda Wildlife Park. Do I watch boxing? Yes. Um, I love boxing. W stream from Preston. Thank you. Um, appreciate you, my man. Amilo. Thank you. Uh, right. Jones, or not Jones, Gomez down and Polina, but it was just because they had a little collision, both back up on their feet. Uh, Fulham looked like they're about to make another couple of changes. Have I ever been to Northern Ireland? Absolutely, Luke. I think I've said this loads of times, but Belfast is my favourite city to go to for a weekend with my wife at, and I love Belfast. Uh, I went up to watch Carl Frampton fight Kiko Martinez up there when he won his first world title, and it was my first visit to Belfast as an adult, and I've gone back a few times since. Love it. What's my favourite Liverpool shirt of all time? The Crown Paints one before it became the Candy one. I always get the years wrong. Was it 87 to 88? And then it became Candy, but it was the exact same jersey. That Crown Paints one. I think it was 87, 88. Frosty Summer lives in Belfast. Nice. We actually had people when we did the Dublin show. We had people come down from Belfast on the bus for the show, uh, which blew my mind. Although we also had Brian come from Boston, which was <laughs> nuts. Have I been to a Liverpool match? Yes, Joseph. I've been to two Champions League finals and I've been to Anfield, I don't know, 30, 40 times. Although I haven't been in a couple of years. Fulham just playing some... It's again, it's just a silly free kick to give away. Fulham free kick left hand side in a not a shooting position but certainly a good position to get um to get across in what final did I go to? Two thousand and five, two thousand and seven. Istanbul and Athens.
do you think we'll end January with only wins? Um, Chelsea game is me a bit nervous, but I hope so. Willian, ball back in, cleared by Liverpool. Fulham have a back though. Down the line. Oh, skins Bradley. Ball across. One all. 1-1. One, one. Diop with the goal. Not much Bradley could do. Or excuse me, not much Kelleher could do about that, to be fair. It was from almost no distance. But now this is where it gets a bit nervy. One one. We still have that one goal buffer, but it's gonna get a bit tasty now for the next fifteen minutes or so. You say Bradley got destroyed. He didn't get destroyed, mate. He had to commit, and your man took it inside. God, do you, have you ever defended or played football before? It's just a good goal from Fulham's perspective. Wilson with the cross. It took a deflection as well off Kwanzaa before it goes on to Diop. And then when Jump makes the connection, it's past Kelleher before he can really react to it. Can I handle spicy food? No, not at all. But come on, boys, focus now. Because the Fulham um, train is going to come now. We've got to match them. We've got to control these last 10, 12 minutes and make sure that we're professional and see the clock out. Come on, boys. Diogo. That's a free kick and a yellow referee, surely. Free kick to Liverpool about 30 yards out, slightly right of centre. They tried to drag him back, couldn't do it, so then they just come in and foul him. Take your time over this, boys. Diop scores the goal and gets himself a yellow in the space of a couple of minutes. So Elliot's standing over this, but I don't know, kind of wouldn't have minded Virgil van Dijk putting the laces through this one. Elliot dinks it in, headed back across, cleared by Fulham, ball back, drops to Elliot. I oh, mean. Not a great strike, and it's a goal kick. Willian now. Again, game's becoming a bit stretched. Wilson, strike. Oh, Kelleher just about gets that away, but that wasn't inspiring me with confidence, Quivine. It did take a little bounce in front of him, but let's have a look. I took a deflection, I think, as well, actually, on the way through. 10 minutes plus stoppage time to go. I think it took a nick on the way through, Torsten. <coughs> Headed away at the near post by Grafenberg. Willian, though, has a back out left side to Andreas Pereira. He shifts it out, gets a cross in, cleared away by Liverpool. Come on, boys. Oh, lucky. That's a free ref. No, no. Plays on. Willian to Wilson. Come on, boys. This is one of those catch them on the counter and kill the game. Raul Jimenez. Don't be grabbing on to him, for God's sake. Grabbing onto him in front of the ref, lads. That's silliness. Come on. Just 
So if you're Klopp now, do you look at bringing Ebu off the bench to help deal with this late bombardment? Ball over here, Quivian comes and grabs it. Well done. Good goalkeeper. Take your time, dude. Take your time. Do I like Klopp? Do I really have to answer that? Come on, man. Would you bring on Robbo? No. No. I think Ebu for me, would be the one. Willian. Cross in. Verge gets a foot on it. Hooked away by Kwanzaa. Come on, boys. Second balls. Second balls. Ball at right side again. Pereira with a cross. All the way through on the far side. Come on, dude. Well done, Elliot. Oh, unlucky. Air ball. Air ball. Right. Take your time. Take your time, boys. It went straight to penalties in the normal rounds, but semi-finals over two legs, it's different for those asking in the chat, by the way, about the situation. Fulham make another change. Eight minutes plus stoppage time to go. It's on a knife edge. Liverpool have that slender lead from the first leg, but Fulham vehicleized on the night. Diop cancelling out. Lucho's opener for Liverpool. It's Kearney coming off for Fulham here. Triple change. Reed, Muniz and Tete on for Castagna, Pereira and Kearney. So triple change. Here comes Ibu. Ibu and Bobby Clark coming on now for Liverpool. I like these changes from Klopp. Ravenberg and Gakpo coming off to be replaced by Kanade and Bobby Clark. I think these are the right changes. Oh, six to go. Verge plays the ball forward. Lucho gives... I like that we've left Lucho on because we could absolutely be doing with um, his speed on the counter here to keep Fulham honest. Am I right in thinking that this is the last season of second leg games? It was supposed to be Craig Mars, but they changed it. Um, it actually only got announced either yesterday or today that it's going to be two legs again next season because a deal hasn't been reached um, over, I guess, trickle-down money. Come on, Jota. Unlucky. Come on, boys. Keep going. Keep pressing. Where is Jada? Out there on the pitch. Five minutes and stoppage time to go. Are we nervy? I mean, I have to admit, I am a little bit nervy, but I'd absolutely rather be in our position at the minute than Fulham's, but still a bit nervy. Van Dijk heads it away. Oh, lucky boys are playing. Into That's a foul referee. No? Okay, he plays advantage and then we'll get a throw in. That'll do. Throw into Liverpool near by the corner flag on the far side.
Ugh, definitely starting to get a bit nervy. Four minutes to go plus stoppage time. Somebody show for Gomez here so we don't just give it straight back. Well done, Jota. That's it. Keep the ball. Keep the ball. That's it. Make Fulham's legs do the work. Keep the ball. Ball moves quicker than people can run. Back to Kelleher. Oh, jeez, that's not great, Ebu. You're not giving him a great chance there. But Kelleher puts the boot through it, launches it long. Oh, unlucky Diogo. Unlucky. Great pressing. Is ref bringing that back for a free kick? On Tosin? I mean, if I that's a free kick to us, because they do kick the bottom of uh, Jota's foot, it's just Jota is such a double hard bastard that he didn't feel it. So apparently now you get free kicks for kicking people. But we'll put that down in the notebook. Well done, Verge. Ball into the left channel now to Jones. He's got Clark with him out there. Gives it to Clark. Why is it every time we take that one off we look shaky? He must really put the work in. Stress the back line out. Yeah. It's a good question, Benjamin. I guess, again, he probably just keeps them honest, right? You know, he's, they know that they can't overcommit because if they leave him space, he'll attack it. Headed back forward. Look, we're playing the game so far inside their half in the last minute or two, which is where we want the ball to be. Well done. Diaz now. Ball inside to Elliot. To Jota. Oh, so close. Unlucky. Good football. Unlucky. Lovely bit of interplay between Elliot and Jota, but just couldn't get the final touch. Yes, Virgil. Yes, Virgil. Throw in. To Fulham. Anthony Robinson looking to get on with it quickly. 90 seconds plus stoppage time. By the way, if you are in, please do hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. We're really close to getting to 239k. Every single one really does help. There's nearly 5,000 people in the chat. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. One minute plus stoppage time to go. And I feel like I need a bucket to get sick in. Canade with the header clear. Wilson now in possession. Ball back inside. Polina. Stand up. Yes, good block. Over hit. Liverpool throwing on the far side. That'll get it. That'll get us a few seconds of relief. Fulham throwing again on this near side. Uh, thank you, Riley. Very kind of you. Stand up. Stand up. Don't block him off. Air ball referee. Thank you. Very Four minutes added on. Four minutes. That's it, Connor. Stay on the ground. Stay on the ground, dude. You're hurt. Stay on the ground. Even if you're not hurt, you're hurt. I mean, that's the yellow card referee every day of the week, by the way. But So, four minutes been added on. Of course, that'll go a little bit past four after this stoppage, but... Diaz, Diaz got man of the match, by the way, which I think we can all agree on. He's deserved. 
Bradley had a dodgy game. No, he didn't. That's, again, just more bullshit. Because somebody went past them for the goal, that's it, he had a dodgy game. Is that the level of... I don't even want to get into it. Come on, lads. Two and a half minutes to go. Fulham throw in on the halfway line, near side. Again, for people saying one mistake, it wasn't a mistake. Just because someone got dribbled past doesn't make it a mistake. He was running full pelt in one direction and the guy tucked it back inside. Hardly a mistake. It's just, he's not like... Inspector Gadget. Come on, boys. Two minutes to go. Kwanzaa. Again, playing the ball into the corner. Mate, this isn't rugby. We don't need to go for touch. It was, mate. It wasn't a mistake, Reese. You run 100 miles an hour in one direction and I'll change quick and let's see how quick you can turn around. He's expecting superhuman shit. Polina, don't foul him. Ball goes behind. Is he giving a free kick there? No, goal kick. One minute and a bit to go. Goal kick. Take your time, Queeveen. Did you? Did he just book Keller, you little donkey? Fuck. How is that wasting time compared to any other goal kick in the game, you little gimp? That's a nonsense yellow card, by the way, from Hooper to Kelleher. Thirty seconds to go. Do hit the subscribe button, by the way, if you're still with us. There's five thousand three hundred people in. We are moments away from Liverpool reaching Wembley and taking on Chelsea in the cup final. Keep him out there, Joe. That's it. Keep him out there. Offside, free kick, Liverpool. That'll do. That, my friends, will be that. That's it, Lionel. You're telling to piss off, mate. Ah, shut up, Wilson. Travelling cop bouncing. We love to see it. And that, my friends, is that. Simon Hooper puts the whistle to his lips. The Reds are off to Wembley. 1-1 on the night. 3-2 on aggregate. Liverpool get the job done. We will take on Chelsea in the League Cup final at Wembley. The first of hopefully a little bit of uh, silverware to come our way. Although we're not quite there yet to uh, be lifting it. But we're in the right place. Job done. Job done. We'll take that. Let me just stop the clock. So yes, Liverpool confirmed in the final. Lucho with the goal tonight. Fulham came back with a goal from Diop. But Liverpool seen out the game quite well. And we will take on Chelsea in the League Cup final. Which feels a bit like deja vu. But hopefully the result ends up the same way. All I can ask you guys is to let me say thank you for another great stream. We'll be back at half past ten for the live fan reaction show. Going to record the player ratings and match reaction now in a moment. Do let us know your thoughts, of course, in the comment section. Please hit the subscribe button before you head off. Drop a like on the stream as well. And I will see you guys real soon. Don't forget, in our fan reaction, we'll be asking you for your man of the match. Do you agree with Sky? Will it be Lucho Diaz or do you have other thoughts? But either way, 
it doesn't matter. Another final for the Reds under Jurgen, and fingers crossed, another bit of silverware. And uh, that'll do very much. We will see you in a while. Don't forget, player ratings and match reaction coming up soon. Talk to you then, my friends. And breathe. <laughs>